Yeah, yeah, you have. have. Do you have a shade on that window? Yes, we do, and it's down. So. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, wow! It is. We are. We have. We talk about the long dark. In yeah. Seattle, basically because you know during the winter months uh-huh. we only get like eight hours of sunlight. We're moving to the big bright. Uh, yes. Basically, yeah. right now the sun is up at six and down at down after eight, and it will keep going like this until we get to like a five, five up at five and down at uh, ten. So yep, I we're, feel we're, a we're, ritual coming on. <laughs> the big bright. <laughs> we 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 would be close to the. Yeah, I, I am further north than Ed is. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. quite true. Yeah. yeah. We used to live in polar regions. We like we saw the sun. We were like Ooh. exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like mid midnight. You could you were not allowed to legally sleep or go indoors when the sun was up. And then yes. in the winter you could just oh sit there gosh. and dwell and wait for spring. And yep. your nest. You know that's, yep. that's 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 the advantage yep. of, of winter around here. Yeah, so. that's where uh, Scandinavians and Icelandic write all their horror stories and their yeah. crime noir Wait. dark. We we broody. we burn our dead to keep warm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 We, we have a strong Scandinavian, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Uh, anyone who's anyone mm-hmm. who's seen an Ingmar Bergman movie know what the heck the climate yeah. must be like to generate something like that. Exactly. I think people we get a strong Scandinavian community because it's homey here. You know, it's, it mm-hmm. feels like you know. Yep. How's everyone? You all doing good since we've all seen each other at Gary Con? We're doing good. Yeah. yeah. I got Gary the Con. usual con crud at Gary Con. Uh, Me too. Yes. But, but but it was just con crud. It wasn't mm-hmm. COVID. Same That's here. Good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and it was mild it. this year for me too. It wasn't that much to brag about. So yeah. Yeah, I, I had about a week's work. Steve Winter got uh, something really serious and went. Oh man! Yeah. It wasn't wasn't COVID. He kept testing for it. And yep. Came up negative, but he was feeling miserable. So. Same, same here. Yeah. But a doctor friend of mine said that if you have all the vaccines, when you finally get symptoms, mm-hmm. the, the the might be too late to test. You might already gone past that phase. So that's, that's what happened. Actually, that's what happened to me. I basically did have COVID about a month ago. Yeah. Uh, I think I picked it up at a book signing in uh, in Kent. Oh, and uh, then, then of course, went to Atlanta for uh, my niece's wedding. And when I was out there, my friend said, "Hey, I've tested, you know, positive for COVID." And I came back. Yep, I had it too. Yeah, so, but it wasn't serious. It really wasn't bad. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I credit the vaccines for that. So. Well, you all know I, I, I had a cold when I got to Gary Con. I was annoyed. Mm-hmm. My wife gave it. So to you're me. the one. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. All my, you, he's, just, he brought the con courage just to like, the con. Uh, yep. Just like my. Uh, Wife always says it's always my fault. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, it's your turn. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, so, uh, Jim and uh, Jeff, I have a funny, I have a funny Ed story that, from Gary Khan. I'm going to save it for the show, though. Uh, it's funny. And, and it involves, uh, Jeff, it involves you in a little way, a little, oh, a little God. Way, I say. again, in a good way, in a good way. I'm an innocent bystander. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, absolutely, because we have something in common. I'll, 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 oh, I'll, oh, so it's not the one with the dress. Okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but you look marvelous. You look oh, marvelous. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be a good one tonight. Uh, yes. All good here. Hope everyone's doing well. You rang? Yes, I did. You got the. Uh, this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be awesome tonight. Ed's off clay. Did I say that right? I don't say. I, off clay. Your book yeah. just dropped. Super stoked for it. Oh yeah. There you Ask go. Clea. Uh, Ask clear. There you go. Uh, we 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 pr- we we pronounce it askleyas, but if you're modern, <laughs> if you're modern Gaelic, it's mm-hmm. more like akli. Oh. Because the vowel shift happened. Yeah. Uh-huh. The phrase. Yep. You see, my Gaelic is not that up to snuff. I'm still 800 years behind or something. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Bill? Rolling through here. Get the ads done early. And, uh, you know, the sponsors won't mind. It's too bad if they do. Right, right, Anna? No. Oh, and I got to show yeah. you this before we start. Oh, um, hang on. Hang on. I got mine. Oh, there, oh, you, there go. you go. And that's the map. Yep. That's, yeah. the, that's the map yeah. of the whole city. Ooh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Andrew, Andrew just literally, he took a pair of scissors and cut the two copies. I of the saw map. you. I was in the oh, booth when you yeah. did that. Yeah. When, when that happened. So yep. Nice. You, so you got one half and and and. That's all. I finally got loot. Yeah. yeah. Finally. <laughs> it's a reserve against return. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Like Thank Saint you. Martin. Like Saint yeah. Martin. Just... I mean, yeah, like I, I, I went to the D&D movie hey, and darling. I got nothing, but oh. I came here, yeah, but I came you here and I got half, this. Half a banner. Yep. Half a banner, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got, got the dragon head popcorn. Nice. Ah, Ooh. you see, you see, none of that stuff made it to Canada where oh, we don't, John, we don't, we don't count, mm -hmm. you know. I, oh. I went looking for a cloth map and the guy looked at me and said, what? What? What's that? Oh, you know, it's a giveaway. And he just stared at me like I had three heads and said, a giveaway for a movie? We don't do giveaways for movies. Uh, the concession stands over there. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me go here. Yeah. On, on the other hand, we, this we is got the first this little, time. Little map oh, yeah, little that's yeah. The, that's what I was after. Yeah. 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 But, but I, on the good side, this is the first time I've been to a movie theater with reclining seats where you could buy oh, booze. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. those yeah. booze too. Wow. We got a couple yes. of those places in Seattle. It's it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. So wow. now I have to take all my library ladies there tomorrow. They're all they're all jonesing for me to uh, t treat them to dinner and a show, which, <laughs> which which is actually sad because it tells me their husbands don't do any of this stuff for them anymore. Yeah. So I suggested dinner and a show, and they all they all squealed like schoolgirls and jumped up and down. So yeah. <laughs> you did it to yourself, man. I know. I know. <laughs> so where where is the theater? You know, of Wonders. Oh, uh, Local, oh no! Or are the long, long it's uh, it's about sixty miles from where I am. Okay. I I live in a half horse town. I know. <laughs> we we have a drive in. Oh, that's cool. Hey, <laughs> yeah, <are> cool. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but drive ins are uh, these days used for other things than than watching first run movies, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's always been that way, Ed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one flea of the markets. Old, one of the yes, old, flea yeah, markets. One of the old presidents of my company that I work for, he bought a, he has a chain of dinner theaters down in like Austin, Texas, the Texas market. He's got like four of them, and they're pretty cool to go in. They, uh, they, they serve your food as the movie's going on. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's like the next uh, evolution of theater. It is making it much more of an event. You know. Yeah. yeah. I would yeah. love to see, you know, real theater have reclining seats, you know, but not uh, happening. <laughs> yeah. I'd love that, except, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, I have to tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. Having attended enough performances at Stratford Festival of Camelot and stuff like that, that old people like, yeah, you know, like the <laughs> audience... Old people now. I mean, yeah, yeah, but the audience is old. Then somebody starts something, and he delivers a line, and all over the theater you hear hearing aids go. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> and in fact, being as Camelot's a musical, there was a thing where he, he says that place the time forgot, and then all the hearing aids went wee, <laughs> and one of the guards who's standing there like a spear carrier to listen to the song harmonized with the ah! <laughs> with the hearing aids and everybody laughed <laughs> uh, how are you James I'm adequate for my needs I'm a little bit worried about you guys now but I'm <laughs> coming we're gonna come live a couple minutes five minutes early fun fact okay uh, Sure. But 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 my needs, Jim. My needs have not been met for decades, nay, eons. <laughs> so I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell that story and how you badgered me, badgered me for something I gave in for the first and last time. What that night? You call at Gary Con, right, Anna? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Did, did, I, <laughs> did I did I badger? badger? <laughs> That's Badger, awesome. squirrel, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no, it ha it has to. It was Wisconsin. It has to be Badger. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there we go. 
We're on a little early, five minutes, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, second time around here, Return of the Wizards 3. But I have a feeling we're going to be talking about a lot of different things, which is awesome, because we've got three legends here, uh, in addition to Anna and myself. Uh, we'll, go around, we'll go around in a weird, counter, weird clockwise, counterclockwise. So start with J Jeff. Jeff, introduce yourself to everyone. I'm gonna when you do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna put up one of the biggest things you've done, just like oh, this. Oh God! No, okay. like this, so people go, "Oh, that guy." There you go. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Jeff Grubb, and yes, I did the original <laughs> manual of the planes and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, including you know Forgotten Realms with Ed, Dragonlance with you know Tracy, and you know and all sorts of other worlds over the years. Is that good enough? You are like the man across all gamuts, really. I mean, I am the Forrest Gump. I am the Zelig of role playing games. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because if you also want to uh, talk about a legendary thing that um, is, and that is this. Right? Yes, it's spell yes. Jammer, so. The new Spelljammer. They did a new set for that. Yep. So. But this is your original, right? Your original. That's the original. That's the original. Mm -hmm. spell the jammer. good one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, welcome back for uh, last one we did was number two hundred. We're two forty. What are we? Two forty five. So it's all, it's almost been a year. Mm -hmm. So we got another mm -hmm. one. Uh, another one coming up here. We're really excited about it. And welcome. Let's uh, let's hit up our next guest there. Uh, uh, Gray Hawker should know this man for multiple things, but uh, a couple that are just unbelievable. Uh, legendary Jim Moore. Jim, welcome back. I How can't we... wait to see what you're going to put up for my product, the best one. <laughs> uh, well, oh, oh, it's got to be. It, it, well, there's two things, right? There's two. Yeah. Right? I don't know and why the cover's not on this. There's but... two of thousands. Yes. Have you lost the cover? You uh, there's no cover so on that PDF, that... but uh, come oh, on. Gotcha. It, we got to start with this. Right? Yeah. 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 We got to start with yeah. these yeah. gods. Yeah. Nice. I'm a little more famous for... The first science fiction role playing game, Metamorphosis Alpha. Yes. And the mm. first apocalyptic role playing game, Gamma World. <laughs> oh. It is going for like $2,300 an old book now. I know, it's mm -hmm. nuts. Uh, what? Yeah, I know. $2,300. Damn weirdo. You wish you had a few hundred in the garage you could sell. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Mm. Yeah, I've been, uh, I met Gary in 74, and he was nice enough to give me a start. and I've been doing games ever since. So oh, that's, that's wonderful. Yep. Thank you so much. Yes. And uh, the second one, of course, uh, which is the book that I created an entire, well, we did, my buddy Alan and I did, and the whole crew, uh, an entire class from, right? Uh, plus all the wonderful things in it, mm -hmm. and that is Greyhawk Adventures. Oh, Greyhawk. Yes. Right, right? Yes. So, yes. Two, two. I thought that. I told that ugly story last time we were here, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. But, well, yeah, about how, yeah, we don't, you're not 100% yeah. sure who did what or whatever, but I have a question for you. Well, we'll get back to a, a, okay. a, a question on, uh, oh, thank you, Shire and Saint. Listen, everyone, we, well, let me do Ed first. I, I, I'm all over the place. I'm like, I'm like Stretch Armstrong tonight. So, uh, <laughs> Deep well, this is going to be a real fun <laughs> chat tonight. I, I have a feeling we're going to be very, uh, wheeling, free willing tonight. So, um, Please, everyone, just sit back and enjoy. So, the next legend who's on the show like every two months and plays in my game every two months with Anna and Eric Mengi, Tony Winslow Brill, and all sorts of special guests all the time playing a Greyhawk mage. Yes, I'll tell that story too about uh, multiple things. Uh, I actually got three people at GravityCon said, Ed doesn't, Ed doesn't play in your game. Why are you lying? <laughs> Ed would never play Greyhawk. I said, all right, just watch. That's <laughs> crazy. Exactly right. Uh, Gray, uh, Ed Greenwood, everyone. Hooray. So what are Ed's? Now, Ed, I went I went low-key with Ed's because, because Ed has uh, so much. I, I, I went to two low-key ones that I use so much that they're like almost Bibles to me for, for, for my, my game uh, for two. And I went with – we talked about these before. But uh, – Pages from the mages, yes. Hey, yeah, great one. Good one. And then the one that has the most brutal spells in it. We talked about these last time a little bit. The Seven Sisters. Oh, yeah. right. Oh, gods. Mm -hmm. Another mm -hmm. one with some great spells in it too. You, you, oh. You're muted. You're muted, Ed. 
It there has turtle turtle soup in it. The turtle best soup ever. But it also has, <laughs> yes, but it also that has was flesh awesome. ever in it too. Yeah. Right? Oh so yeah. As we went through. <laughs> yeah. So um, what? Uh, there's just some, and that you know, created a forgotten realm. So uh, you know, we can. Only yes, do, but but you should have talked about the double diamond triangle saga because all right. of us here can be implicated. <laughs> <in that. laughs> uh oh. I was not. I was not part of that. Part of well, that yes. Thing, okay. So. Yes, that's true. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you were in the building, but yes. that's it. Yeah. Elabor <laughs> elaborate a little bit, Ed. Sure. Um, I can recall sitting there. Well, well, Mister Ward, the esteemed Mister Ward, made a decision oh. of about the cover. Would we call him a paladin or a holy knight oh. for somebody else's book? And I was keeping very quiet because I'd written book number three in two hours. And two hours. then, it and then three weeks to write mine. And then, <laughs> then Rob, then Rob King sent me the last book, the ninth book that he and I were going to co-write and he'd written it. And he says, honor to work with you. And, you know, when I opened the FedEx package and uh, I needed it back in tomorrow's delivery. And um, I'm sorry, I've written twice the word count so your job is going to be chop put in what you want and then chop and i cheated because they didn't do saturday pickups in canada fedex didn't then so i said i can't send it back to you till monday first thing so that gave me a day and i spent the first day working at the library i spent the second day chopping the novel in half and i put in two things i wanted to put in rewrote the whole thing and then i had to shorten it again and again and again and then oh, throw it God. into the hands of FedEx and thinking, wow, this is a masterpiece. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you, wow. you, talk, you talk about being in the building at the time. One of the yeah. things that kicked this off was the idea that I think Stephen King did the Green Mile yeah. in yeah. a novella format where he sold, uh, did a whole lot of small books as opposed to one big, you know, doorstop. And right. TSR picked up that idea as a way of running the double diamond, which was like plots that double came apart and then came back and then prey came apart and came back. And that's why it's a double diamond. Uh, so, you know, characters would go separate and then they'd come back. It, it was it was an interesting concept. And we had it cast out among so many different uh, uh, creatives at the time. Who else was on the team for that? It was you, Rob King. It was Jim. David Weiss was in there. David Weiss. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just remembered um, afterwards when it was mm -hmm. all done thinking, well, that wasn't too bad of a demolition derby, but it might have been much <laughs> worse. Just because there were so many moving parts whizzing around in an, in an enclosed space in such a short time. So, I mean, I have to give kudos to Jim for making sure that not only did the trains run on time, they didn't <laughs> run into each other because I thought it was going to be a huge pile up, you know, locomotives and cars in all directions. And it wasn't. It actually worked. You know, it told a coherent story. And I thought, wow, everybody brought their A game just to make it work. Yeah. And for <laughs> us, it didn't sell worth being. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. So we never Which, did another one. Which is why they're now collector's items. <laughs> yes. Oh, here I've got a list. What here. isn't a collector's item here? Yeah, that from really. the first edition era, right? Everything's a collector's item on that. Very yeah, true. nowadays. Very David true. Wise, Roger Moore, David Gross, Rob King, Rich Baker. I don't know who did the Uneasy Alliances. So, you know, they, that, that was a uh, All Star Squadron there. I think mm -hmm. it was Clayton Emery, but I'm, I might be guessing. Okay. You might. What what year was this? Oh, the double diamonds were. Let's see if I can find it here. Just curious. You're making us work too hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got access to my, you know, Jay, Jay. Jay. I'm not finding. Oh my God, I was still like young 85? and beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's a good, I was a high, I was senior in high school in '85. Yeah. 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 Great. That's good to hear, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, make us all feel, you know, me? Vintage. Oh, I feel vintage. vintage. <laughs> all right, so tonight, everyone, we surpassed 10,000 followers finally. Thank you very much. Very cool. So uh, with that tradition, every 1,000 followers up through 10,000, this is an original. This is like one of the best books you could get. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm giving this away. 
Uh, uh, and we're also going to do a, a PDF of Raven's Rook from Willie and Henry Dvorak. It's Rook Roos hit, sneakily hidden. Everyone knows that, and it's a great book. And we'll do this. And then we get some more. We get if we if we get over type, uh, level three hype train, I will I will add something to this. Yes. Yeah, so there you go. Best of Dragon Volume Three. Celebrate ten thousand followers. So, um, let me start with this question because I'm going to forget it for for Jim. Jim, uh, sure. my favorite um, reference uh, in all of this, and I, I may have asked you this when you were on like two years ago. Uh, who, if you remember, who wrote this? Who wrote the mass, the hunt story, the wild hunt? Oh, nope, let me flip it. I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. I'm sorry, I didn't flip it to the right thing. These are demigods. Who wrote the wild hunt? I wrote all those chunks. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So, so I'll say this: when I was a kid and I read this, man, this drew me right to. I was like, this is one of the coolest stories. Yeah, so I, I don't think I ever asked that's, you that. That's what happens when you use real legend. Yeah, <laughs> what a great story. What a wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, just and I've used it several times in other books and products too. Okay, very, very cool. Yeah, and just the uh, the Master of the Hunt's just a great, a, a great, you know, uh, and isn't that great artwork. Oh, wonderful. Ro who, uh, Ro it says Rosloff. I don't know. I was going to say Jeff D. myself. No, it says Rosloff right here. Yeah. It looks like James. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that art. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I just was curious because we were here on this. I had this open. I wanted to ask you. you know, and, and, you... and now you know. All right. That's and, awesome. And I remember they opened the doors at the University of Wisconsin Parkside, the last building, and all of us rushed forward along the trazzo floors, jumped down those steps round to the the old baggage check at the bottom where they were selling all the deities and demigods it was like a mad dash uh -huh. of, of gamer bodies elbowing everybody everybody yes. racing down to buy their copy yeah well, I, get lots, I get lots of compliments and then every january some idiot says that i plagiarized the men's <laughs> the the cthulhu and the uh, elric stuff which no, me crazy. no yeah, it's all it was all licensing. And let me we tell heard, you, we heard, yeah, we you know want, about that. Yeah, you want an expensive book? First, first print of that in great condition. Five hundred, yeah, really? Five hundred, really? Uh, easy. No, no, three thousand. Yeah. A signed one just went for three thousand on eBay. <laughs> Uh, I'll bring mine. I'll bring mine to Gary Con next year, then, Jim. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I got. A, I got a pristine one. It's on. It's on the no touch shelf for where my guy. My guys aren't allowed to touch it. Right, Bill. So. Eyes of you. All right, so uh, we're going to talk some spellcasters and some wizards tonight, and I know we're going to go all over the place, which is great. And I know Ed has. What have you compiled a little bit of, Ed? Like you don't normally do on some shows. So, oh, so I have. I brought with me tonight three new pieces of lore: one for Greyhawk, one for Dragonlance, and one for the realms. That is fantastic. That is awesome. Really excited. Troller Games, one of our sponsors, doing a great. All right. So with those cheer, with those five, uh, this is what I'm going to do now. Oh, thank you, Patrick. Um, it multiplied. You're not going to be able to see me because I'm covered. I got two of these. Two best of. <laughs> Two Best of Dragon Volume 3s, okay? Or both originals. To finish out the 10,000, we'll do we'll do two. There you go. All right? So we got three giveaways, those two, and the Raven's Rook PDF. All right, ready? How, how do you win that? Uh, exclamation point drawing on... <laughs> <laughs> exclamation point drawing in the chat. All you have to put in with your with your Twitch ID, you put exclamation point drawing in, and you get registered in, and then I do the drawing at the end. Through It's all set up. It's all linked up through Streamlabs into Twitch. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. Right. yeah, man. He's just he's just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, it, and let's celebrate. I finally got to the ten thousand followers, and you know it was it was been a long it's been a long march. Uh, is that a big deal? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it it is on Twitch. It's a big deal. Thank you, partners. Yeah. A big deal. And then yeah, which we did a year and a half ago, and then ten thousand. It's kind of like five digits. You know what I mean? It's like it's better than having four digits of followers, right? So. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So, but uh, thank you all. Really appreciate it. So, um, I know we went all over the place last time on questions, and uh, so I wanted to I wanted to ask this first, and then hopefully you got a question or two. Um, 
Can you give me uh, someone who may be obscure uh, in each? I, I know, Jeff, if you want to go into Spelljammer, that's fine, too. Uh, okay. You know, uh, for uh, an obscure spellcaster or wizard could be low level, mid level, high level, which you thought was, that was cool. That was like someone like, you know, ah, Morton Cannon's great, Tensor's great, but, you know, this, this, this one I, I really love. Yeah, for each. So I, I'm going to go to Ed first because I know Ed's going to just throw one right out there like he always right. does. Oh, okay. One, one that um, uh, some male gamers took an interest in was the Shadow Sill. Okay. Uh, who was um, uh, Elminster's apprentice and uh, Manchun's lover and came to a sticky end in Spellfire. So they were very interested. They were also very interested uh, a little later on in the the drow lady who was in Elminster's pool in the introduction to another book. Well, they all wanted... <laughs> hey, come on. You know I have it right here. Yeah. Mm. And they were somewhat interested in, in that of what that lady was doing. And she was apprentice. Um, um, so, yeah, th those are the interesting ones because we started to tell her stories and then someone in-house decided that this was too risque, reminded <laughs> gamers that there were females in the world, so they stopped talking about them. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Um, I was all ready for the... I was setting up that adult line, and then, then Andrea came and told me it had been cancelled again. Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, is this a Susprina, right? That was Susprina. That's right, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I actually, I actually took Lorraine out into the parking lot and explained to her that... Um, Nothing Touchstone does reflects on Disney. And she just looked at me and said, they'd find out, Ed. Gamers would find out. Oh you really did that, Ed? You really did that? Of course he did. Yeah. Ed, yes. Oh, my God. Ed. I respect you just went off the roof, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, every time I came to TSR, hundreds of people would come up to you and say, hey, Ed, could you go tell Lorraine this? Could you tell Lorraine that? Yeah. And I'd say... Yeah, but why me? You guys work here all year <laughs> yeah. long. And they say, yeah, but we get fired if we say Nobody that to her. Nobody would tell her no but me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good start there, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, who wants to go next, Jim or uh, Jeff? Jeff? Oh, well, I'll take with a, with a, with a um, mm -hmm. Spelljammer character cool. who is minor, Meredith. Okay. And she appeared in the D the Spelljammer comic book that was uh, out from DC. Uh, we did uh, an advanced D D book. We did Forgotten Realms book, did Dragonlance book, and we did a uh, and we did a, a Gamma Rodders book and a Spelljammer book. That was like the last one in there. So I think it lasted about maybe twelve issues. And Meredith was the captain of a small jammer, which was a miniature spell jammer. It was one of the young of the of the great spell jammer itself. And so, you know, she was an interesting character from the standpoint of she was sort of a pirate mage type of character. So I I, I go I go with that. Very so, cool. Yeah. Way cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, definitely. What but, what became but, of her then? Is, is there any story? I think I think she's out there somewhere waiting for a cameo. Okay, you know <laughs> it's, only, it's only a matter of time before she shows up in the background somewhere, like the D and D kids. The uh, uh, the one I take from um, Dragonlance lore mm -hmm. would be Makesta, who's not a maid if I'm right in Dragonlance, but her or original character was from uh, a friend of mine's campaign that I was running and her name was Max originally and had a girdle of gender changing and cool. basically adapted with it. And it was, you know, basically, so it was, it was, and that term was based on the old wizards uh, animation from Bakshi, you know, they killed Fritz. It was Fritz and Max, two, you know, low level grunts, you know, they, they killed Fritz. They killed Max, you know, Fritz. We and, use oh it all God. the time, Jeff. We use okay. that all the time. Well, that's where Fritz and Max came from and they got the ship and the ship got into Dragonlance and that's how they became Cass and, and McKesta. So that's awesome. I did yeah. not know that. Every, every, I did not know they had to make Fritz build. too. So there's the stories behind stories around here. So that's all, yeah, that's really, great to see. She was originally a half elf mage. So 
it's great to see that the great minds think alike and just those little one liners out of, you know, uh, everyone knows my favorite one liner from Caddyshack, the Mitch mm-hmm. Comstein guy and all that. It always appears in the games and, 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 uh, and they killed Fritz, you know, I even have a Fritz killed Winchester. Fritz. Yeah. That's really neat. Uh, another, another great line, Max, press the button. Yeah. <laughs> Max, press the button. From the great race. Yep. Tony Curtis, uh, Jack Lemon, Natalie Wood, Peter Falk. That was a great movie. That's the one where uh, Peter Falk is the uh, um, uh, undercover is, agent that they don't know. No, or is, or is that no, the no. You're, th- you're thinking of no. You're thinking of well, there's Murder by Death, and there's also the in-laws. Yeah, in-laws, he's the in-laws. former, yeah. he's former CIA. Murder by Death is he's sort of the Sam Spade type of character. Uh, okay. The Great Race is about a, a race in the 1920s from New York to Paris. Oh. And uh, Tony Curtis is the great Leslie, who is this hero. He's got the white car and the white suit and everything. And uh, um, yeah, Jack Lemon is Professor Faith, who is his arch nemesis, who is, wears black and he's got the top hat. And Peter Falk is uh, Jack Lemon's sidekick, his minion, who always is screwing up. Okay. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Yeah, they're all they're, Sam. I remember the in-laws, and it was like it was like late. It was seventies, I think. It was mid seventies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I, Columbo is one of my favorite shows of all time. Right. Just you know, I love Peter Falk. I love them. Uh, and, and the quote that comes out of the in-laws is "Serpentine Shelley." Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that That's... shows up in our games a lot too. <laughs> and Ed's just laughing. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so C- Curtis has already thrown out Caddyshack quotes in chat. So like, if I yeah. don't do one from Stripes, Caddyshack, Animal House, mm-hmm. you know, during a D and D game, I'm I'm not trying. So you know, it's always like yeah, you know, we get the noon in with the dice rolls and all that. So yeah, it still goes on to this day. We are child. We are all children. Uh, us guys, right? Not okay. Anna, but look, all of us guys right here. <laughs> I might but, still be a children. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very cool. All right, Jim. How about you? My, Great, mine, of course, would be Ren of the Blade. Okay. Ah. I I started. My idea was the Living City in the RPGA Club, mm-hmm. and and Ren walked through every adventure that I ever wrote for the, the RPGA, and uh, he he was he was a half no he was yes a half elf thief deity that would constantly encourage people to try to steal things they didn't have a chance of stealing. Nice. So, yeah, he was a fun guy, and and I stopped doing him when they did Ren and Stimpy, because it really scared <laughs> me. That, that Ren character, I just did not like at all. It kind of ruined my Ren, what it Peter did. Peter Laurie voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. it, 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 I started using it, but I started spelling my Ren, W-R-E-N. Right, of like the bird. E- yeah, I like the bird. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. Um, Anna, Anna, do you got one? Uh, Obscure? Not, not, yeah, not... not um, I, I was thinking... Um, I want to take one that that I kind of tweaked for 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 my campaign, and and I I took one that that I I created a bard that that I call Bastin. He's Bastin the bard that I've not created for me, and he's he's a a spy that works for the Shieldlands, and he works inside the Bandit Kingdoms and stuff. And I he I haven't used him that much yet, but he's one that is is coming. He's going to have a, a significant role, and we'll see what he will do with the players or the characters once they 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 they, they will get to him again, so to speak. They they opted to not go with him in the early parts of the campaign. So so that's one one that I but so so that that's the problem. Man. I only create creature and NPCs for, for my own campaign. So so they don't become that legendary yet, so to speak. But Bast and the Bard and his little troop of, of, of people is going to come. He's a, a chaotic good, but and meaning he can he can be morally maneuverable when needed, so to speak. And 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 he, he has a, a lot of uh, um, he, he speaks a lot of languages and stuff and he since 5e introduced so much magic and stuff into the bard so so i'm converting he he started out as a 5e bard but then i'm going to rain down rein in his magic abilities a little bit 
and then give him a bit more fighting punch, so to speak. So and 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 stealthy abilities and stuff. He's a 16th level bard, and oh. and so, so he's uh, starting to to get le legendary. And and he managed to fool various uh, critters and and NPCs on the Iusian side by basically bribing them and giving them them uh, fine cool. fine fine cool stuff and one of his best friends he's friends with two dragons and they want to invest in him as as they kind of go to for for corrupting the enemy so he basically has a lot of of, of big coffers to 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 take treasure and stuff from so 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 he's really good at he he's the opposite he doesn't collect treasures he hands them out to others so to speak so nice. that, that's his base so that that's one i'm going to Stat him up and present him a little bit with spell list and and some of his accomplishments. So, so that's one that that's that's the only I had at the top of my head, so to speak, when it comes to, to heroes that I've been. Well, he's way cool. yeah. mm -hmm. Definitely, good one. So mine, yeah. mine is from the Slavers reference. Uh, Alita Norbalos. She's a mage and she's a judge and she's next in line. She's evil. She works with the the. the the slavers uh, behind the scenes and had a, uh, there was a big war between her and a pe player character, as Anna knows, Michael Baton, and she kind of won mm -hmm. and had him decapitated in public. It was awesome. So, uh, she, and he, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, assassinated. He was assassinated in public at a bar. Uh, yeah, uh, but she kind of uh, is, a, is, is a great anti uh, negative, you know, neutral evil, I think, aligns so perfect. You gotta love that. Uh, and not super high level either as a mage, but she can hold her own a little bit. So that's the one I, I, I thought of, uh, you know, I kind of liked. It's if, Unless you know uh, the second edition Slavers book, you're not going to really know about Alita Norbalos, uh, but really a, a cool character. Yeah. So, and if you have a question, if not, I have another one. So it's up to you. Yeah, I have. I have my mm -hmm. first question going to be dragons uh, because oh, cool. it's one of these troops that I just love dragons. And I've created two for 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 my campaign. One I created a celestial dragon as a type of planner dragon with with a story that ties into Bahamut and some of the legends around him. So they're effectively Bahamut's children in in a in a kind of an off way, so to speak. And and that, that's that's one. The other one I created was the opposite of the fairy dragon the fairy dragon have as the, the kind of the the light fey dragon and then i created the hag dragon or the dark fey dragon as the 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 alternative or the opposite so to speak <clears throat> that i'm using for my campaign so i wonder what kind of what are the oddest dragon you either created or used in 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 that in conjunction with your realm, so one of the realm projects and stuff. So we need, nice we need the oddest, yeah, the oddest one, not necessarily the oddest in stats, but in 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 weird kind of backstory or or something like that. Yeah, I, I, Jeff, I got you one. left, so please this, go this, first. Yeah, this is this is from my personal campaign, which was mm -hmm. back in the back in the late seventies, Purdue University. Yeah. I did have a red, white, and blue dragon. Oh wow! Three headed, <laughs> like Ghidra. You know, <laughs> and basically red book and it breathes fireworks. Okay. So, yes. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That is sparklers. Wow. Yeah. Pretty much. You know, it basically, it, it, and if mm. I was redoing it again, I would probably have them breathing different types of fireworks. Yeah. It's, like, it's for celebrations just, and, and fest, it, festivities. It, it, and stuff. it was it was a good chaotic dragon. Yeah. So, you know, just, awesome. <laughs> that was fantastic. Nice. That's a, a, a oh, different God. cool take on it. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it was it was a silly monster. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had a lot of those. So yeah. But they, they have a place in, in, in D&D &D campaigns, too, for sure, in games. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ed and Jim on this one, the dragon yeah. question. Hmm. Ed, Ed's thinking. Ed is thinking. Okay, yeah. I'll look at it then. I, I was always irritated at Gary for making gold dragons lawful good. Okay. Mm -hmm. It just irritated me. So naturally in my campaign, we had a gold dragon who had a helm of evil on. Ooh. And he would deliberately lead play characters oh, i love it and that, that reminds me lead characters to their doom and i and i like the way you you corrected yourself on players or characters and let me just drop in john pickens was <laughs> a, a wonderful oh dear <laughs> but john had for every 10 ideas three of them were pure gold and when ad and the second edition was being done zeb cook would come down at least once a week sometimes Two or three to, to beg me to get John off his back. 
<laughs> one of the most brilliant things that John ever came up with was we don't kill players ever. We kill characters. Yep. I think that's a really good distinction, you know, that, that helped us in the back in the Christian times mm -hmm. right, right, when, yeah. uh, when we were summoning demons and, and yeah. bringing children to their death. So, so anyway, John was just a genius that day. John, uh, Jim, have you ever thrown that dragon up against the warp guys? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Next I'm not year. brave enough to do that. Uh, <laughs> Next year. The warp guys are <laughs> a huge club that's uh, through the United States and other places. Yep. And, uh, and I did a 25-player game on Wednesday night of Gary Con, and of the 25, 20 caught COVID that day. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I didn't. I was in that room for about a half hour watching. I was near my, uh, Michael Clark. Right? Uh -huh. I, I was hanging near him, and I watched for a while, and it just uh, it was amazing that Wednesday night. So that was cool. Yeah, but I didn't catch it. So, uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, what a cool thing. Okay, so. now it's Ed's turn. Ed. Ed's last yeah. for once. Wow. Da -da 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 -da. Um, <laughs> it's a mess. Okay, okay I, I will I – will... Pass over all the sorts of dragons that I created for various products and stuff, and and I will go to uh, individual dragons in the realms. Mm -hmm. I, and what I had a lot of in the home realms campaign, and they all got removed by various editors in house <laughs> at TSR. Well, because they were they muddied the waters usually for for the word count we had to tell a linear adventure. They didn't have room for years worth of intrigue at the gaming table. And that was all of the dragons, and I did a lot of them, that lived in human form. They shapeshifted and lived out their lives in human form in human cities, manipulating the politics like Bilio. Like, sure. that's that was their lives. Um, making sure that places like Waterdeep and Cormir and Om and Tethyr dance to their tune and they would literally try little experiments like oh let's see if all the, we can get all the people to like mangoes make them eat mangoes <laughs> and, like and, and and they would do something like that and i would just role play the intrigue as they sidled in here and sidled in there and of course they thought adventurers as in player character adventures were the greatest thing since sliced bread they were like hit teams slash scapegoats that they could uh, slash strike forces that they could unleash to do things that they couldn't ask the regular citizens to do without the regular citizens going, wait a minute, why? Yeah. So yeah, so the the adventurers were the toast, uh, the spread on the toast, if you will. <laughs> and and every time I I handed over something in the realms that had one of these, somebody would read it and say, that's cool, and out it would come. Because it just took too much word count. Poor guy. <laughs> so, so um, with that, Ed, Greyhawk dragons, I think, are a genius creature. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, Jim. Mm -hmm. I know you were creator, right? Yep. Uh, yep. So, one question on that, Jim: Was the steel and gray dragon article in Dragon Magazine the basis for the gray Greyhawk dragons, or were at all? If you know Ahi and Rahab, that yeah. old article. Okay. Well, the basis was. I had to get a product done in three months that takes six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it's just a genius. It's a genius creature. Oh, I feel so much better now. I wasn't the only one. Good. <laughs> you, know, you are not the only one, buddy. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is an awesome and, book. And in, in the latest movie that some of us might have seen, that we have an obese dragon, so there, yeah. there's kind of interesting yeah. diversity in, in dragons these days. Chunky. Red dragon. Oh my god. Oh, and that, and Hallmark, that, one ornament that they did was the stupid fat dragon from the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have brought that. No, up. that's okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> Always a sword. Uh, you got a little, can you elaborate, Ed? Since such a new no, no, that, that has to be Eric Boyd's creation. Because oh. it's from Dragons of Faroon. Right. And for some inexplicable reason, the movie directors moved him from mm. one underground city, Gracklestug, to where he was in the movie. Because 
when you've read about him in Drear's Guide to the Underdark and, and so on, he was too fat to get out of the caverns, okay. so he was trapped forever around Gracklestug. And somehow in the movie, now, I mean, you can hand wave it and do it. It was magic. But they, they, some, did, they, they did a joke on that. So, yeah, you know. yeah, 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 exactly. They did a yeah. line, so. Yeah, so, so he somehow magically got out of one place he was trapped in and moved across the Underdark to another place he was trapped in to be in the movie. So yeah. that's that's Eric Boyd's creation. I oh, was just, that's fantastic. I, I was Did just you know? killing myself laughing huh. as I was yeah. watching the movie. I <laughs> yep. was going... I think... Yeah. I think fat Matt Forbeck uh, recognized him too from one of his uh, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books. Yes. Yeah. Recent one, so made, cool. made a cameo there. Yep. Just made it's me cool. sad. Yep. Well, I thought it was cute. Right? Yeah, I well, think it's kind of cute least, to take things off At least off the... we know it was from a written source. Uh, yep. I mean, yep. that, 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 at least... Yep. That makes it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, uh, that's the same Eric Boyd who mm -hmm. told us when I did a specialty priest um, um, Gabin with him and Malden, remember Anna, that he snuck in the intensify orgasm spell on another name yes. into, his, into the deity book. Yeah. And he got and, that in there. Yeah. So, and, yeah and, the and, same and, Eric they, Boyd. They, 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 so, yeah. Yeah, That's Ronald but... D&D. Uh, good to see you. Uh, by the way, we Hello. our great sponsor, Troller Games, added a fourth gift for fourth giveaway. So we got a $25 yeah. gift certificate to their store now. So we have two Best of the Dragon Volume 3s, originals, one PDF for uh, Raven's Rook, and a Troller Games $25 gift certificate for giveaways tonight. Great to see you all. Hang out. We got three legends. We got Ed Greenwood, Jim Ward, and Jeff Grubb, all true legends of D&D. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Thank you so very much for coming in. Hang out and please say hello to them, yep. and you can ask some questions. I got here's my question, and then I'll have a comment uh, story about Ed, which was hysterical. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Which, yeah. So, give me the most overpowered mage spell you, that that there is. Like that's just like that's ridiculous. Or one. One of them you're like, I, I hate this. I hate this. I hate when uh, players use this. I hate wishes, of course. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Uh, limit, limit, uh, I would say the original Disintegrate. It's been nerfed now. Mm -hmm. But the, the original Disintegrate was okay. scary. That's true. That's true. So was, finger, so was Finger of Death. That was another one, too. True. That's, true. That spell, you can't get raised. If you die and, from Finger of Death, you're, you're unraisable. And did you did any of you notice in the movie the Finger of Death that, yes, that absolutely. Sofita was yes, preparing? Yeah. I mean, the camera even went in on it, and then they didn't say anything, and off it went. Yeah. yeah. Good point, Ed. So, what yeah. do you think about that one, Jim and uh, and Jeff? I know it's a magic jar. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wonderful spell until I magic jar a giant queen. And Gary got irritated at it and, and destroyed the spell, in my estimation. <laughs> nice. It's not nice now. <laughs> I haven't taken it since 1976. Wow. So, um, okay, that's another good one. Uh, and then Jeff. There's one, but it's not a D&D &D spell. Okay. It's from Arduin Grimoire. Oh. oh. Was, yes, which was basically, you know, D&D... &D on, on steroids. Drugs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there was one that basically turned the target um, irrevocably and permanently inside out. Mm. And oh. it's just the, yes. And the idea of irrevocably is uh, just always stuck oh my in gosh. my brain. That's disgusting. As, as, as a disgusting thing. Now, uh, one of the last things I worked on when I was working for TSR slash WOTC was a book of spells, and we were collecting all of the spells from the various products. And I think Ed has about five of them that turn your bones into jelly. Yep. Yep. And and one of them is a defensive spell, and one of them is an offensive spell, and one of them is a spell that you can use to get through cracks. But he basically was turning pe for people's bones into jelly for different reasons all the way through. So pulling them together oh just gosh. couldn't be done. <laughs> <laughs> that was thanks to my wife, Jenny. Yes. Who had many, many uh, wartime recipes. You know, she lived through the Battle of Britain, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Old recipes that you rendered the bones down mm -hmm. to jelly. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. 
we had a little I someone think, someone Kate has an old, old cookbook of her yep. of her mother's mother in which you know it has detailed instructions of how to clean a deer carcass yes <laughs> mm-hmm. oh my god well and, well you see in canada you clean a deer carcass by backing up and running over it again <laughs> <laughs> i thought you used a car wash okay oh my gosh <laughs> oh that, you had a car. car wash <laughs> oh that's that's why you use your power wash for us yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah, so sure to be handy than to be handsome. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Gary Khan. Uh oh. So uh, I'm running a, a game. Uh, it's almost in the same room that you ran your, your warp game in, Jim. A couple of days. It's on a Saturday morning. Okay. It's, it's our mm-hmm. two drink minimum group. So we it's have. It's a great place to play. It is. It's awesome. And I actually live streamed it. And I actually I opened it up so that I let people come in and watch. Uh, so uh, so this is two drink minimum. Ed Greenwood has Ravalantar as Greyhawk Mage. Anna has Anna has her uh, Archer Thief character. Um, and uh, then uh, Eric Eric Mengi's there with his Halfling Guardian. And that leaves uh, Eric Boyd, who we've been busting his stones just recently. And Tony Winslow Bro aren't there. So I get I get Andrew Valkoskis, who Ed's working with. And I get Chuck, who's on Chuck Combo from Troller Games, to, to fill in for them. So we're running an adventure. Now, we're, we're doing a game of four hours, right? Usually four hours on live streams, four hours, four hours. I never let them rest, ever, right? Ever. So Ed is like, after the first fight, Ed's like, this is the perfect place to camp. We'll light the door on fire, and we'll sit up here, and we'll camp, you know, right? And so uh, I'm, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I said, Ed, I'm in a charitable mood today. We're at Gary Khan, and then I never have to hear this ever again on any of the streams. You guys can set up camp. So there you go. So I let Ed set up camp for once. Ooh. One time they got to rest, they got spells back to set up camp. But this is where it comes in with you, Jeff. Uh oh. Finishing up. No, and it comes right to this book. It comes right to uh, Pages from the Mages. I crossed over a lot of spells, I crossed over a lot of things. And at the very end of the adventure in, in one of the tombs, uh, and, uh, you know, Ed's character, Revelantor, is a Greyhawk mage. He's seeking, trying to seek new spells, knowledge, you know, and take it back to Greyhawk City. Uh, you know, and and bring new things in because you know there's cross world stuff. He finds a book. He finds your friends, Andy Collins's. He finds a collected wisdom of Snowlock. Okay. Ah, yes. But it has a new spell in it. I thought Ed was having an orgasm when I told him. <laughs> right. It Ed? doesn't take much for Ed to do that. Yes. <laughs> So, I I created Snowlock's Snowball Avalanche, and uh, you know, fifth it's a fifth level spell. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so uh, I we will the details will come up in the course of gameplay. Revelanter is only eight, so he can't cast it yet. Mm-hmm. So yes. Ah! Yeah, so he has to get up to ninth level. So we have a brand new spell. So if you if you talk to Andy, just say uh, and if he I have never had him on, so if he would want to come on the show sometime, that would be great. But yeah, so I created a new Snowlock spell because. I know you said last show how much you loved how they don't bounce back and all. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man. So it just t- it tied right in. So we got a, n- a new Snowlock spell for the campaign. Yep. So, so what level is Wall of Ice? Wall of Ice is fourth. Is okay. It- so it's doing more damage than the Wall of Ice made uh, horizontal? Yeah, Wall of, Ar- Wall of Ice made horizontal just does Ice Storm. Right? Yeah, it does. It's it's three D. Yeah, three D ten. Three D ten. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, okay. a, it's a it's a fifth level spell cast by Knight. So Corona Cold is a fifth level spell. Right? Okay. So think about it in that realm, but on a different area effect. Yeah. You, yeah. Oh. Also, oh. you have, a, have the physicality of the of the avalanche itself. You've exactly. Been people prone. Oh. So. You see? <laughs> Well, well, you see, you see, I w- I was doing the, um, I can't cast it yet, so this is the delayed action orgasm. But then you guys, you guys start talking spell damage, and I'm having it now. <laughs> and that's it. And that's the fun part of the game is like, uh, number one is using Ed's spells against him, which is yeah, thank you, which is always wonderful. <laughs> uh, and then two, uh, and, uh, finding stuff that crossovers from great forgotten realms of great Alka back and forth or, and creating new stuff and this is this is a perfect time for it so i just wanted to you know uh, let you know that uh that jeff that you know the tie-in i remember the first wizards three you did you you, you, t- you really discussed that spell yeah. which was which is yes, fantastic yeah absolutely so there you go that's my little story 
I gave and, him that. And I, and I love, love the fact that we're expanding out his, you know, his uh, uh, portfolio because, you know, he's so sort of the cold mage that we have now because we can use him for that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing. So, like, with Wizards, here you go. I, I, I don't think I brought these out last time. Here's my Elementalist sub book. I have six of them. Air, Earth, Fire, okay. Water, Quasi, which is mm-hmm. Lightning, Radiance, Magnetism, Para, all the crap, other crap. Right. Smoke, mm-hmm. salt, uh, ooze, right. slime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we got we got six different elementalists. They come out, um, and, and the, the uh, question, I, uh, next question I wanted to ask. When second edition came out, and the Wild Mage and the elementalists came out, did you guys say, nah, this is ridiculous, I don't, uh, uh, and also Necromancers kind of came out in that second edition era, because they became almost like a, an illusionist, they became specialized, right? You could mm-hmm. specialize a Necromancer, I created my own class. What what were your thoughts in the the spellcasting world when this second edition, I thought it was great, just to give more variety to the spellcaster, what, what are all your thoughts on that, in that era, when, when it started to give you a lot more variety? Well, first of all, we never thought it was ridiculous because we sold 200,000 of those books. <laughs> That's in awesome. In the first release. Great. Yeah, which is gigantically awesome because we really needed the money. Okay. So, no, it was, it, I think Zeb Cook did a really nice job yeah. putting that all together. Tell and, them the magic we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Yep. It's great. Well, and also, it, it also comes back down to first edition where we had the illusionist as a separate subclass with a separate spell list. And once we had that, the, you know, the pressure suddenly came out. Well, what about the other schools of magic? Mm -hmm. What about uh, necromancy? What about abjuration? You know, what, what about, you know, alteration spells? And so basically you saw the subclassing of uh, wizard coming out of the fact that we had the illusionist in that player's handbook. So, you know, if you do it for them, you should do it for everybody. I guess. And and not only is it uh, cool for a company that wants to sell books to have new stuff, and it's cool for a gamer to get new stuff and lust mm-hmm. after new stuff and all oh, the new things coming out, can't can't wait to get that. But it was also, and remember we were talking on, a, on an earlier show about all the monsters I was doing that were like Beholder lookalikes. Oh, and I used to want to get some Gary Khan too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bleeder. <laughs> yeah, I'm just just to stop the rules lawyer at the table who's memorized everything in the monster manual. Yeah. If you if you put enough new sorts in, people can't hold them all in their memory at the table, and it gets back to role playing. Same thing. If you have so many spells. In the, in the official books that people can't memorize them all and hold them all in their heads at the table, you get back to role-playing, and it's a lot more fun. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there was that, too. You, you bring out endless... It's not just, oh, good, necromancers have their own new spells. Now you can't keep track of them out of metagaming, you know, the, the player's memory, and then you have a much more fun game because people just say, oh, my goodness, what's happening? What's he doing? You know, <laughs> no, and you react. Don't to... Yeah. And anyway. No, and and that's and I'm going to use this as an example. Your turtle soup, but here, look at this list. Just in Seven Sisters, all these yeah. spells that no one knows about. Man, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Take them, take them to convert them to fifth edition. No one knows because I don't think any of these are even in fifth edition. Like, uh, well, you know, uh, no, blood, blood lightning. Yeah, they're not. And so take the book. You know, I'm talking to everyone out there and make the changes to it. Whatever edition you're playing, it's not that hard. Yeah. No, it's, your, it's a great one. I, I was always surprised back in the day that illusionists and illusion spells got the specialty treatment before that more point. obvious, like evokers and stuff with flashbang stuff that always right. were the, the like the what about the fireball specialist, the lightning specialist, the, the, the evokers and and yeah, the, the, the ones that did the the more offensive and and to me it was weird that illusion. And anyone knows why illusionists got the special treatment and not the yeah. Yeah, yeah in first edition yeah. Jim, oh, yeah. Do you have a clue? Wasn't, it in, wasn't Illusionist in Eldred Wiz- Wizardry too? It was. Was it? It might be, okay. yeah. That's what happened. It got a, Gary was very watchful of that kind of stuff in the game, but it got away from him when when Eldred Wizardry came out. It, again, it was mm. a, we needed the money kind of thing. And and so once that happened, it gave the idea for all the other types of uh, of things. And Gary definitely jumped on that. And so, yeah. so, but uh, 
Yeah, just I think it just got away from him. So did, 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 it, did it come under come out of Brian? Because it did basically because the elder wizardry is listed as being him and uh, him and Gary. Right. Yeah, so, but I, I think no, I think that was an Arneson idea. Okay, I was wondering yeah. if it came out of like an early game, or if you had an illusionist, because a lot of stuff that we see comes out of someone who created the first thief, the first druid, that yeah. sort of thing. And I, never, the game. I never, I never in D and D, I never met an illusionist in Gary's game. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, in player's handbook, AD and D, it fit well with the, with the introduction of the gnome, the new character, race, right? Yeah. Because yeah. You know, they were they were they were heavy yeah. on the illusionists as well. Yeah. If you ran a, if you ran a gnome, he'd have to be both an, an illusionist uh, thief, the mm -hmm. git. So it just uh, that, that's what they were known around the our table as. So hey, some of the it, when when this addendum to Unarticana came out, right, mm -hmm. and you had Ooh, illusionist yeah. assassin was an allowed gnome class. Let me tell you yeah. something. What a dis what a nasty class. I, I, look, yes. Jim shaking his head. Yes. Non detection <laughs> of proof of visibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I hate assassins. Yes. Because it's it takes away from role playing. You know you don't yeah. you, you don't role play an assassination. You roll stupid dice to see if it happens. I don't think that's good for the game. So that's why I made Agreed. it out. Yeah. Agreed. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's that's okay. out of our game after the first uh, first yeah. couple. Fair we ran enough. a couple sessions, and literally anytime they saw somebody in leather armor with a shield, obviously <laughs> that was an it was assassin. An assassin. Oh yep. my gosh! Yep. <laughs> because you know the uh, so yeah. I thought Oh, sorry. oh, I love to sorry. hear that you are all saying there's stuff in first edition we don't like. No. It's good to hear. It's, it's a big to... book. It's mm -hmm. not hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's segments. A... Now I the thing is we, we took we took this stuff out for a spin mm -hmm. with our home campaigns mm -hmm. and saw what worked and what didn't work. So off so it wasn't like you said, Oh, I hate this, I'm never going to use it. It's okay, let's try it. Yeah, that didn't work. So yeah. we're yeah. Exactly right. I had a hit location chart that basically I had gotten out of one of the magazines, and that lasted about three weeks because, like, we kept you know maiming all of the player characters just from yep. the amount of roles yep. that you would make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. I remember. I remember Len when he he vehemently <laughs> said that that doesn't belong in D and D with no. with characters losing limbs and 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 yeah. eyes and various yeah, things. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was the one. That Weapon was the one. speed factor. Oh. Yes, oh. that was another one that. Yes. Yeah, I remember. I had well, my segments. period. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had my 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 period as a DM when I tried to enforce it, and everybody they hated me at the home, at the party at the table. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you there, Kane. So I I made a bounty hunter, which is a replacement for an assassin, and they can render unconscious, not outright kill. And it's mm -hmm. a good, it's a nice class option. So um, well, and, and also also the fact that I think if we, if we redid the assassin in modern terms, it would probably be that that horrible percentage table. Would be to for a setting it up to basically get to the point where you're about to drive the dagger in, and yeah. then at that mm -hmm. point we'd we'd slip back into combat rounds. Right. Yeah, because yeah. that tape that table sidestepped the whole rule process. rule system and the yeah. whole yeah. process of D and D, and 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 that to me was very weird that you just took a whole event and just made it into a percentage. I don't yeah. Think would ever redo the assassin? They're, yeah. they're kind of on a different bent. Well, yes. Yeah. I, I, I think you're right just from the amount of, you know, they might do a bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. They might do something that awesome. basically has functionality similar, but I don't think they'll ever embrace the assassin. Yeah. So we, no. know, we no. know everyone hates weapon speed factor for the most part, and everyone hates assassins. All of you, give me something in an old school game that you, another thing that was like, ah, I, I, I don't, I'm not using it. What else? I said segments earlier. Okay. So yeah, okay. segment was seg seg we were they were trying to break it down. Yeah, even just more rounds. Granular. Yep, I agree. Yeah, okay. Segments. But it was the first attempt that went into the action economy that came yeah. from third edition and onwards, exactly. so to speak. Mm -hmm. so it was an, an early version of it that was, and then got worked on successively in 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 later editions, so to speak. And and now it become the staple in most fantasy role playing games, one yes. version of it or another. So so it was it was very flawed, but it was a start of of that kind of breaking it down to actions. Yeah, I, I really hated encumbrance. Yeah, yeah. that's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a rule. Oh, sorry, go and twenty thousand coin treasures. 
that I couldn't carry away because mm -hmm. they were too heavy. Yeah. I appreciate that at all. Yeah. yeah. And, and encumbrance is also one of these rules that before you have computers that can calculate what you have, it's it's no one wanted to use it. So, yeah. so but yeah. once you start having a tool that you simply write what you have and then it tells you in red that you can't walk as fast as you normally yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. And I and I'm gonna make a big admission here. The one I hated was initiative. <gasps> okay. Ooh, which type? Yeah. Well, here's yeah. the thing. I mm -hmm. always automatically gave the player characters initiative. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because they were the heroes, with yeah. one exception. If you're trying to break into the fortress and you come through a door and the defenders have a set thing, like two guys with crossbows will shoot at anybody who comes through that door. Mm -hmm that would happen first because it was a setup um right. and they would, an attack yeah mm -hmm. and they had practiced it it was part of their daily drill and you came through the door wham they let you have it but other than that i always gave the players initiative and people would just like their jaws would drop at gen con yeah uh, you, you're giving us initiative and i say yeah you're the heroes do something with it because of oh, course yep. that's the flip side it's like when the it's like when the dungeon master gives you these great treasures and the young kids go whoa look at the treasure we're getting and the old <laughs> veterans go oh shit because they, they, they know what's coming they know what's going to get thrown at them yeah. Oh, in computer good. game terms, it's the save point right before the big battle yes, yes. Exactly. yes. <laughs> yep. save early and often and yep. what did you do about surprise then? That could still happen. Oh, yeah. They could still be surprised. Oh, yeah. There was nothing to stop surprise. But okay. um, I, I just didn't I – di I didn't want what I experienced as a little kid. Um, the one place that we could hang out legitimately, believe it or not, was the pool hall <laughs> on, the way to, on the way to high school. And it was owned by Cliff Thorburn, who was world champion for a bit. And he would come in for fun. If he saw young kids, he would give them a free game. Like, he didn't have to pay for the table. Because oh, wow. he, want, he wanted to suck them into playing the game. But, of course, he would break first and then run through the entire table and nobody would ever get... <laughs> to shot. Just take their cube out oh. because he was so good. And I was thinking to myself, why would I ever want to play a game that does that to me? Where I, I'm a spectator for the entire thing. Somebody can beat me, win the entire game, and I haven't even been allowed to play. Yeah. That, must, that must never happen. So um, it was like, no, I want everybody to get their feet wet. And the flip side of it is, if they get, if they screw up, they don't feel bad because as bad because they did it. They were the authors of their own misfortune. The dungeon master didn't do it to them. Sure. So they, they somehow felt better about it. But of yeah. course I had to keep very quiet about that when I was writing stuff for you guys. <laughs> I don't want you thinking, Oh, like Greenwood gives them initiative all. Well, so he's going to screw up all the encounters. So they're absolutely deadly. Well, yes, of course he is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you and Anna are two big boys and girls for me to do that for you guys. So, you know, but, but in our game, you have hero points you can even add to the, the initiative rolls, right? So, you know, I, I skew it a little bit in their favor. So, I, I, I like yeah. surviving your games, Jay. Yes, I, you I, I, have. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, very cool. That's a, that's an interesting one. Uh, a, a lot of people said uh, um, weapons versus armor class is another one they can't stand in first edition. Oh, you know? I, I, uh, we use that. We you use do? That. Okay. That, was, that wasn't horrible. We had had the book laid out and basically, this is, I'm talking about before okay. I joined yep. T TSR back in those days. That's one of the ones we pulled out and then mm -hmm. we stuck with i will go back to to initiative and say i had in my old campaigns group initiative you know each side as right. opposed to everybody right. that's what i do we do group we do group absolutely group group initiative because that's what you know it felt most comfortable with it when slowly we evolved to the current current uh, status but the idea is players one ties and that's that's how i slanted it toward the player characters is so they basically and i use six-sided die so basically mm -hmm. running at gary con just you know basically was okay so even if i get a six you got a chance you know 
Right, and I can lose on a six because if they're adding a special hero exactly. point to the die roll. They roll a six, that's a seven. I lose yeah. automatically. Yeah. So they, yeah. they win a tie. They win ties. So yeah. they, they, that, that was you know, the, oh, that's sort of the cool. That's a good idea. The they win ties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Yeah, so. and another thing you can do as a DM if you want to either be be helping the, the the characters a little bit or you want to be nasty, you can use it other way is to stagger, not give get all the enemies into combat on round one, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So so hold back some and then then send them in, oh, in waves yes. as needed, mm -hmm. so to speak. And and, yes. and a lot of, of DMs when you inexperienced and you don't you don't realize that that they're especially when they're power uh, spellcasters with area effect spells and stuff you need to do like in the military you spread out your assets you, don't put all, you, you make sure that that your npcs and monsters and all the villains keep far enough apart that a spell can't wipe out them all so to speak so 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 make sure that send them in 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 waves and that oh. also gives a chance and you can also use it kind of you can say that the enemies sending in some of the minions just to get a feel especially evil ones to in order to to soften up the enemy and also mm -hmm. to gather intels are there any spell casters yes are the there spell casters yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so 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 play with that don't send in everything at once and but sometimes you should so to speak you should simply shock the the, the players by simply sending in almost everything by making Make sure that the players have initiative at that time. Like they open the door, they shoot first and 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 do all the stuff, so to speak, and then come all hell breaking loose the other way. That so so try to vary this tactical. The enemy should have different tactics, both depending on what type of enemy it is or, or the situation, and also for fun. So start thinking tactically as a DM, so to speak, in, in these situations. Cool. The downside of always giving them, you know, initiative is that I've seen situations like this where they open the door and there's a huge mad mass of orcs there. They yep. close the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They basically start yeah. running early. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, you know we, we want them to be heroic. We want them to leap into combat. But, you yeah. know, you, you, you know, oh, yeah. just as uh, often, uh, I guess, uh, like, you know, I think we're going to go to the other yeah. end of the yeah. game. Yeah, my, <laughs> my players have learned the hard way. They run first now. <laughs> They're yeah. Than, yeah. yeah. And and what Anna was saying that never worked on my character players at the beginning because mm -hmm. they were all war gamers. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they all said to me, "Okay, are there any Prussians?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know awesome. they, they because they all oh Battle of Waterloo yeah. oh yeah Blucher and his Prussians yep. got it. Yep. Are there any <laughs> Prussians here today? Yeah. <laughs> But, but uh, on the other hand, it is kind of fun if the same type of character or or meaning the same orc t uh, clan or tribe has the same fighting tactics over and over because then the players say, we met these bastards before. We know how they fight and they can, <laughs> they can learn around. from it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of knowledge that both the characters and the players should have and they should be able to make use of it. So so don't deny the players that knowledge. If they earn that, they should it should work in their favor, so to speak speak excellent excellent discussion points here really appreciate it yeah that was a fun one definitely thinking yeah. about mm -hmm. all that yeah uh, i want i want to i want to think about uh spell casters again is there something that you uh, early on first edition second edition whatever or now man i wish that we had put that in, uh, in into the game either forgotten realms or you know jim into one of your rule books something a spell caster of some sort that that was really lacking in the game or a type of spell. I know I, I always wanted more force spells myself. For example, magic missiles is force spell. I I, mm -hmm. I I added force ball, which is a t which is like a fireball, but it's only ten foot radius. And it's force, right? That hits out, um, and it actually approaches a shielding can actually absorb the damage on that spell. But it's a lesser area than a, than a fireball or or something like that. So uh, I. I I like four spells. I wish more were in the game. Uh, there's one I wanted to put in, and I put it in a couple times, and the editors took one look at it and t t took it out for game balance reasons, and they were right. Um, but I always thought, if I was living in, in the Forgotten Realms, the first thing I'd want to learn as a mage is how to hang spells, how to cast them before a combat, Oh. And have them hanging, like the latest fireball. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. no, but, it, yeah. but no, no, but but I wasn't thinking of it for offensive spells. I was thinking of it as a as a mantle like or a ward like.
protection for myself. So if I'm walking along or if I'm sitting in my saddle and I'm not a good rider, I'm a wizard and um, it's achy because I've been in the saddle for hours and we're all in single file and we're going through the mountain pass and they ambush us and down come a pile of arrows because I'm obviously the wizard with my pointy hat and robes. And the arrows come down and go tee -tee 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 off my shield, which just flashed into being. And I go, hey, guys, ambush, you know, rather than starting with half my hit points. Yeah, we had broach of shielding. I mean, that's probably yeah. one of the functionalities of magic items is to give you that sort of you know, yeah. protection. Yeah. So I'm going to try and bring this up here. Um, it's a good one, Ed. There is the lovely Great Nut Spellbook. Has mm. has a, well, let me just read it because if I it'll take me. It's a wild mage spell. Mm -hmm. If dot 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 then that same of the spell. Upon casting a spell in conjuration with another type of spell, the wizard delays dot the effects of the second spell until certain conditions are met, named by the wizard. For example, the wizard could cast if then at a doorknob, then directs a fireball if then you know um, conditions like if then an orc walks into the room or if then if a, a, a monster or a creature only one if then can exp uh, can exist in a time of a five foot radius. And you use that for defensive purposes too. I thought that was kind of neat, so we added it into a repertoire of wild mage. Uh, so there you go. That's something nice. similar to it. Yeah, and that, that comes right out of the great that spell book. Just so anyone knows, if they know this author, Steve Bartell is the name of the author of that. So if anyone knows that person, there you go. So Nice. Good one. Yep. Good one, Ed. Real good one. So. Jim, Jeff, anything? Uh... Yeah. This is, this is, this is this... Go ahead. Oh, Sorry, Jeff. Any go for spell it. I ever wanted became a dramid spell. Yeah. There was... I, I always wanted to be able to summon something from my room into the dungeon. So Dramage's instant summons happened. Nice. And, yep. and I, I did lots of, I researched lots of spells that I wanted done and they all became Dramage spells. Well, that's great. So you said they're mine because I'm doing it, right? Yeah. Well, actually they're Hasbro's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But they got in because he, he was, yeah. because yeah. You know, he, he was Dramage. making the call. Yeah. Like, uh, here's one. Dramage's protection from non-magical gas. That's yeah, fourth well, oh, oh, the fourth level. Oh! The Andy <laughs> Fart spell. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we ever called it that, Ed. <laughs> well, that's because you had standards. I, however. <laughs> well, you see. Uh, so, so Jim goes even further. Second level. Dramage's scent mask. So he's thinking farting all the time it sounds like here with another one lots of gas i had to do something oh that's so funny <laughs> here's another one drama just benefit uh beneficent polymorph six level i we guess can you can't drama spells now and talk about other things yeah sounds good they're, they're wonderful uh, all i'm saying is jim they're wonderful spells wonderful Thank wonderful you. spells so here, here's i have a question for jim here is it did you do create most of these because of Gary's campaign, because of the stuff he was doing. I created doing to all of them because of Gary's kit. Okay. Yeah. So I basically mean, he, he would throw, throw yeah. you know, noxious gases at you, and the next time you show up, he goes, I've got a new spell. I know, exactly right. I, I, I did create the spells because of Frank Mensa's campaign, too. Okay. But most of my spells were because Gary was hurting us with them all the time. But wait a minute. Gary was hurting you, but he called you the Monty Hall DM. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Yes. Because um, I live as a Monty Hall DM, and that's okay. I don't mind that title. I wear it as a badge of honor. I like agree. Agree. So uh, how many, uh, if we can just ask this, Ed, uh, I'm, I'm, Jim, I'm sorry. We can just ask this. How many times in, in, the, in the, the Starship Warden Adventures, Metamorphosis Alpha, because Morden Kane adventured there, right? Yes. How many times did you uh, take him down? In there, dozen, half dozen. Well, okay. Here's the problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite character was Ren the Half Elf. Right. He was in there too. So anything uh -oh. that I did to those other guys, I had to do to my character. <laughs> so they had an amazingly easy life on the Starship board. Okay. Until, until they were rescued by a Goodman Games product that I wrote called uh, The Doom of the Warden. 
<laughs> and now they're rescued and happy back back where they belong. Excellent. So, uh, anyone else with uh, with that with that topic there? Uh, something to create? Okay. Well, I, okay. I'll add one thing up uh, beyond just you know magic. It was the idea of being able to hold your action. We, that's something that's really kind of showed up late in the in the, in the ages of D and D, and the idea of you know I'm going to wait for them to come through the door, then I'm going to going to hit them hard. So yeah, I, I think that was an excellent am I, uh, rule. Am I breaking addition. up? I just got an. I, I, yeah, and I think that's something that basically like, I would have used back back in the day because that's often is the magic user has to wait for his turn and he's got arrows coming in in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the idea that he could basically be that that was our level of preparation. Um, yeah. I'm getting a note here saying I'm unstable, which is true. Occasionally, but, but no problem. But I, am, yeah. am I cutting out? So no. yeah, it's okay. Only occasionally. You're, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. It, it, good. Yeah. But okay. I know that that was something that Gary didn't like because he actually wrote about that in one of the Soapbox articles. Yeah. He said delaying action is never good. That, that's always poor play. And I thought, no. Not, no. no. Not group <laughs> initiative. Group mm -hmm. initiative. Yeah. I allow it for the group that wins initiative they can delay action wait for the reaction absolutely right yeah mm -hmm. absolutely 100 yeah. percent. i think it's a great it's a great one really cool uh so Tro troy asks uh cannibal asks uh, do you all have a favorite uh, school of spell casting evoke evocation necromancy illusion you know whatever uh, uh, enchantment charm you know i always go for abjuration okay yeah, that's an obscure which is, one. You know, which is more the clerical end of it. Yep. Yeah, and but the, and, and when I was doing things like you know uh, uh, you know basically trying to break everything down into its spell spell groups, abjuration got the least love because it was protective. It was mostly clerical and that sort of thing. But I, I always like the abjuration spells. Yeah. Okay. And I and I came in before all the schools, mm -hmm. so my wizard could cut cut cast all of those spells. Right, right. No, and, and I never used evokers, none of them. No. Uh, it, it, when second edition came out, I thought that, uh, I agree with you, Jim, but I, elementalists were a different story. Elementalists, they, you know, they couldn't use uh, any other elements, but they could use general mage spells. Because mm -hmm. I thought, I thought that it was weird that necromancers couldn't use illusionists. And it was just strange, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that so. that that I reacted against too. It's like yeah, no, I should I be able to, anything I can learn, right? I anything agree. I can find in a dungeon or convince some tetchy old codger who's a more powerful yeah, wizard than I am to teach me, I should be able to get to use. Yeah. Not have some rule book say no, you can't use that. Exactly right, Ed. Yeah. But did you uh, you and Jeff have favorites or? Uh, Jeff, you already said yours. Uh, yeah. uh, Jim, you and Ed have a favorite. You know, well, I like vacation. No favorite because I want to cast every single spell. Okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as same as Jim. Although I will I will uh, agree with you, Jay. Um, I always thought there should be more force spells in the game. I agree. Mm -hmm. As I like a designer, I was always yeah. trying to sneak them into pages from the mages, mm -hmm. and and on the rare occasions when a dragon editor nerfed spells out of that it was always those spells really yeah lack of saving throws i think has something to do with yeah. basically people leaning on it because the four wall of force the force cage basically the four spells that we had were kind of op yeah so because there, there yeah. was no response to them there was no way yep. around them and yep. i think yep. that that basically gave uh magic missiles always hit there yes. is an irrevocability about four spells. Now, if you come up with something type of saving throw, etc., that basically gets you around the effects of force, then that becomes more palatable. Yeah. So uh, I, I agree, but like an area effect spell, for, like the force spell area effect, I'm going to give a save. I, mm -hmm. I, I, Ice Storm is the one that really, you know, sometimes we argue about should there be saves on it or not, but there's not. Because, you know, yeah, there's not. And, yeah. That's, and that's stated, I think, in one of the write ups for it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm getting more and more into it, that spells should either have an attack roll or they should have a save, so to speak. Right. That they should, if spells that do damage should fall into one or the other categories. That, that I'm, I'm getting more in that I want that. And some get yeah. both. And that's, you know, that, that makes them much yeah. more, you know, difficult so to yeah. utilize. But they usually are for like spells that would have major effects. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but the charm of the magic missile not having a save, but it can be defeated by a simple shield spell, is yeah. something that yeah. It uh, now yeah. it's a, it, one of the D and D staples. So to yeah. speak. Right. Don't, don't yeah. mess with it. It's I kind think of it's yeah. 
it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And it, and, and it, it comes it comes out of uh, the old Corman film, The Raven. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one one spell it. school that 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 now as a DM when I'm starting to to want to dig deeper into to tweaking my own campaign and house rules one school that I feel neglected I want to that is also the I think both the most hardest to regulate and stuff that's divinations that they they yes. can be really yep. nasty and difficult to deal with and 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 so on so so that's something I want to 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 go in and, and start thinking how would they work what's possible and what should be the limitations and stuff I've I've just started this work, but I realize now that I want to 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 tweak it. And I have a follow up question. I'll take my next question Go for that it. that falls into okay. it a little bit. And yeah, and that is unusual senses. Meaning, have you given mm -hmm. monsters and NPCs and stuff sense? Meaning, we we know about the general ones, and then in old school you had the 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 more technical ones of infravision and ultravision and stuff that that and now we have more me fantasized versus them into dark vision and stuff which right. i like much more than the ones that were more in reality have, have you used or invented or used any or or likes especially any any odd ones so to speak for monsters or or oh, others well yeah. you've got you've got tremor sense for example yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's um, a good which one comes that comes out of the zorn that yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. was the first time i encountered the idea that they can you know, detect things there, yep. there mm -hmm. you know, through through uh uh like vibrations better, in the but, ground or even vibrations in the air you can almost uh, turn it into blind vision or blind the sense grimlock, i think the, the that grimlocks, yeah grimlocks yeah, like that, yeah. being blind and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. them. coming into but up to your up to the previous point um Divinations are tough because they are not combat related necessarily. Yeah. You know, it's the wheel and woe, it's the ask mm -hmm. the gods, it's we yep. have a ceremony. Mm -hmm. So divinations tend to work through NPCs a lot better as far as, you know, stocking them up as opposed yep. to, and if you're going to basically use them in combat, you're, you're on the right track with the idea of spider sense. It's yep. basically, it's something that allows you to, uh, in modern game terms, get an immediate reaction uh to to an attack for mm -hmm. example yeah so that, that that would be probably a a, a modern version of trying to deal with the divination spell yeah and and one of the, the things that i way i want to deal with with the how to use divinations is a bit like they did in pathfinder second edition they 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 had uh, senses had precision some senses are precise meaning vision mm -hmm. you you when when you see something you can locate it exactly what it is then you have things like smell that is imprecise meaning you can smell that is an ugly smelling monster here somewhere but mm -hmm. you don't know exactly where it is so you can kind of tell that certain senses are precise meaning are a life sense if you have one or, or is it with an undead that has a life sense is that a precise sense that it can use to target or or or, or go and strangle you or is it more just like a, a general sense that the, the monster can a vampire or a ghoul or something that has life sense can sense that there are life within 60 feet in whatever mm -hmm. direction i think that's an a point that i think should be listed in senses whether they are precise or not and also whether they can be turned off at times yeah I mean, that's that's sight, the other sight yeah. which mm -hmm. is the major one we use we can just yeah. close our eyes but mm -hmm. your your ears are always on you exactly know, you're always yep. going to mm -hmm. operate with yep that's a that's a great mm -hmm. point and also how you can interfere with them meaning sonic spells can screw with the hearing yeah. and stuff meaning how do you screw with a blind sense or a tremor sense or or, or stuff like that so so a, a little bit of 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 a few kind of rule systems for these not overly advanced or crunchy but a little bit of it can be interesting place when you have when you have these well you got uh, what uh, daredevil's radar sense i mean looking mm -hmm. at the comic book universe they have a lot yep. of special senses mm -hmm. operating yep. out of there that allows people to mm -hmm. know things yeah, mm. I saw it was a monster. I forgot someone wrote it where I saw it, but a monster had gem sense. So you yeah. can sense valuable things, yeah, gold and silver and, and various stuff like that. So you can basically tempt it with, with, with treasure, so to speak. Mm. Or if you were carrying stuff, here, here, you could sense it. Here, here's one. Basically, you know, basically a ranger sense, where basically if you're in your chosen terrain, you basically, or Good against point. your chosen opponent, you can sense I, there are orcs here. I can smell yeah. them, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. You're just yep. aware mm -hmm. of their presence. Yeah. Um, because personally, I, I, I dislike the fifth edition Ranger. I, I don't think they're particularly, you know, 
as powerful as a lot of other classes for their uh, yeah. for, for their levels. So, mm-hmm. and, and I'm just I'm just bitter, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it, it sense like that, like like you can you in in your favorite environment, you can detect like humanoids or, or yes. something. That mm-hmm. should be an imprecise. You can sense right. that it's within the half a mile or a hundred feet or whatever the range is. Mm-hmm. So, so you should, that way should, it can give you a hint and, and a forewarning, but not, <laughs> not like you can target it across a hill or, 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 or something with a spell at night, so to speak, or something. The, the blade blo- blo- blows blue. If orcs yeah, are mm-hmm. yes. exactly. Yes. That, that kind of, because yeah. that adds more cool things to the story without screwing up the mechanics of the game. It does, but, but the DM has, so the tough DM has to be aware. It's yeah. so yeah. tough That's on the DM to doing. remember all that. Mm-hmm. So oh, that oh, exactly, yeah. it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let me it, ask it you that question. For like, say you have something that detects gems at will or, or the paladin detect evil. Do you say to your players, you must state you're using it or or, or, or every time a paladin comes within 60 foot of someone evil, they know. I'm just it, curious. It depends. So, yeah. it, it, that, that is something I list per sense, so to speak. I have, for instance, the, the paladin is detect evil. I simply assume it's on all the time. Yeah, and, he will, and, 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 and he will, okay. no, but it's not like a, a radar thing. It's more like the paladin gets like a gut feeling. I, 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 it's like a gut, and I tell the paladin, like, you have a gut feeling. That is like a, when he steps into an inn, for instance, you get a sense that there is evil here. And and that would not be more precise than that. I will. It, it, and then if he wants more precision, he has to sit and concentrate, do nothing else, so to speak, and 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 try to to do it. So so I try to play with senses like that. I don't give everything just because they they ask for it or automatically. But so so each sense have a nature, so to speak, to function. And and I think that that's kind of in order to to. And the problem comes to to first you have to write it down and you have to kind of get the player accustomed to it and then once the player knows the rule and how it works then hopefully the player will take care of most of that work for and it would not burden you as a dm that much so to speak but i think that they to normalize how a sense works so to speak is important for players so they get to feel like it's a treasure i can use it but it has limitations and it adds to to how the game is played and and it's difficult and tricky and and i have another one is arcane sense that i have uh, wizards and other spellcasters and stuff can have an arcane sense they can sense and see where spells are being cast and 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 meaning and and the range is meaning if you have cantrips they can only be seen very close like and, and but ninth level spells can be sensed like miles away and and that is it, it's a rare sense but but demigods and other divine beings and 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 demon lords and stuff they can sense it so they if they especially in their home turf they can sense if you cast a high level spell they can sense it a mile away and they know exactly where it's cast and what school it is what type of spell it not exactly the spell but if it's a necromancy or 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 or, or something like that in in general terms that's a lot what for school the DM it is keep, that's a lot for the dm, the DM. yeah but yeah. if you keep it if it's part of the, the the general thing then then it usually works and and it's also also that the, the the lord or the deity or the art might be busy with something else so it doesn't matter if you forget it occasionally because nothing is perfect so to speak and so it's so so that adds to, and that's a, an interesting way of nerfing a, a high level party without totally nerfing them meaning they can blast but there is a risk that the enemy might notice when you do so and so you want to keep a low profile and don't use teleport in or, or stuff like that so 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 it's a way of of, of nerfing it in in a non an absolute way but in a okay let's do we take the risk or not kind of way interesting well, it, this, this is a good question uh, for my old campaign you know back in the 70s it was very much the paladin would have to invoke and say yeah. concentrating mm-hmm. in order to be able to use which worked well both for the dm i had less i had to worry about because of yeah. that situation and for the player because it wasn't something that was always awarded to them as soon yeah. as now there are points where you can use you know you go into the evil temple you know and you're overwhelmed by the sense of evil and mm-hmm. that's a plot point that you can yep. use the ability for what about you ed jim how did you handle that yeah. sort of thing back then detect well, evil from power i didn't do a lot of different senses but just the child and detect evil they had to do it themselves yeah they, they actually i always wanted them to say i'm turning that on 
Right. So that way, I didn't have to keep track of it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah and, I agree. Yeah, and, and, and another. In, 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 oh, sorry, Ed. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say one interesting thing is that you can blind the the detect evil sense. If you're going to an evil temple, the whole temple is evil. They yeah. can't sense well, where yeah. the monsters mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So it's it's only useful mm -hmm. in good areas, so to speak. It's really useful if you're guarding a good temple against evil things coming in. It's perfect sense. You will get really good readings, so to speak, and and you get that sense. If you go but step into the evil temple, everything is evil. It also created a guns and armor situation in yeah. which we had like missiles, magical aura for detect mm -hmm. magic, that sort of thing, where you yep. basically had particular spells that would shield your uh, evilness yep. or mm -hmm. the presence of magic. Yep. Yeah. Go yeah, for I it. To, oh, yeah. I was just, I was just going to say before I before I turned the realms over to TSR in the old days when it was just me writing fantasy stories before D and D, um, I had as a regular thing and it disappeared from the realms when it got published uh that magic users and clerics could sense when powerful magic had been cast in a place like a mm -hmm. ruin mm -hmm. they would they would walk in and they go oh yeah something mighty was cast here but 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 long ago, long, yeah. long ago. Like magic auras they, they yeah. taint the place so they, they yeah. leave here or something. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it, as Jeff said earlier, it's, it becomes a plot point. It mm -hmm. doesn't become something useful um, mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a combat sense on the thing. It becomes a storytelling thing yeah. where you can say, ooh, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's no moon. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Very good ones. Yep. So uh, there was a question out in the audience about clashes of ideas. So when you were all running your, the show, how'd you how'd you manage that? Like Jim, when you had to do Grail Adventures for every in, in three months, I'm like, very happy to say we had excellent groups. We, okay, everything turned into a group. So mm -hmm. there was a Ravenloft group and an Al Kadim group, and they did a wonderful job of taking care of questions and and solving problems. So. I just think the the group effect worked really well for TSR. Excellent. And we had geniuses like Jeff Grubb there who <laughs> could do everything. He could do Marvel. He could do Spelljammer. It, 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 we had some oh. extremely talented people. Even Ed was pretty talented. <laughs> no, but but I was not on site, so you yes. were spared my pranks and yeah. my my daily um the the library ladies I work with now have learned to rue the day because they never know what's going to come out of my mouth as I come through the door of the workroom saying, hi, with, and, and shower them with chocolates to sort of soften them up. Um, so, the, the, and that's the other thing. Nobody at TSR gained 400 pounds because I was only there once a year. <laughs> no, no, no. For one of my groups, I used to get used to bring a box for our meetings on Thursday afternoon. I would bring a box of little chocolate donuts. Because they were bad for you, and you had to have done something impressive in order. You know, you had to you made your deadlines or they did do your stuff because uh, because they're bad for you. So you have to do something to earn them. So, uh, yep. What have you done? What have you done to earn a chalky donut today? And at one time, Steve uh, Winter, you know, basically we're having a meeting on Spelljammer, and I said, "So what have you done to you know earn a chalky donut?" And he said, "Well, I've been editing your work, and it's such an unbelievable piece of crap. I'm just killing myself making it function. Here, take the box." Uh, <laughs> that seems fair. Yeah, uh, my, oh, my, my, my party. Oh, sorry, Gwen. Well, I was just going to just go back to you know the, the old days. We had a great group of very talented people, and they didn't always agree on things. So there was that type of thing where the person you know running the, uh, the the group leader or the person running the project had to make the call about what they what it's going to go forward. When we did Drag Dragonlance, Tracy, you know, basically we said there were no orcs. We said there was no no gold pieces at the time. It was steel that was the currency. We made some changes to some bed bedrock concepts, and basically that's one thing that set Dragonlance apart from Greyhawk. You know, your traditional fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I was just going to say, I had a party, my last party I had in Sweden, they learned not to feed me the hard way because when they gave me sugary stuff, I fell asleep. <laughs> so oh. so they say, we can't feed you. We, we keep the candy here so you stay awake so you don't uh, fall yeah. asleep. Sugar crash. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So so I, I didn't get any. So, so yep. So once you wrangle the cats in the group, everyone got to it is basically what happened yeah. in those groups. That's, that's good to hear. And everybody yeah. in the group had their stuff they had to worry about, too. I mean, you know, Ed and Jim were both talking about how they had, you know, horrendous deadlines, but it was always something. So the ability to go out and muck with somebody else's work was definitely reduced. Yeah. Excellent. I did. I opened this up last time. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to do it now. Do you guys want to ask any each of you questions? Please. Yeah. If you have something you'd like to. Oh. Yeah, it's hey, okay. Jeff, did we first have dynamite and gunpowder and spelljammer? Or do we have it before then? Ed did an article for uh, <laughs> Dragon Magazine that I think I embraced for the Forgotten Realms Adventures set. I may be wrong, but he basically created, you know, basically introduced gunpowder in not necessarily for the realms, but in such a way that it was suboptimal. It yeah. was multiple loads. He made it accurate to the era, which is to say it involved a lot of effort to load and to reload and to clean the barrel and all, all the other stuff. Have I got that right, Ed? Yep. And, and just one thing to add there, that was so popular that Kim asked me to write a second volley. Yeah. So there, there's two of them. Yeah. yeah. It was so many gamers wanted it. And, and my one fun thing that I put in the article... I put the dragon in the article, which was a a missile, a U.S. Right. military missile of the time. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one of these things, okay, your accuracy is completely off because it's it's not meant for personnel. Um, but if it lands, it does something like 300 D6 damage. <laughs> wow. You, know, you see like a it, dragon flying <laughs> over, the, over the forest nearby. Oh, yeah. okay, we can take that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Those were good days. <laughs> we shall not see there like again. No. Uh, <clears throat> so, you, you, I'm assuming you all at least played Boot Hill once or twice, um, and and then Merlin came over from Boot Hill into, mm -hmm. and, and it became instead of gunpowder, smoke powder. Is that correct? And uh, it was it had a magical effect to it because in the Slaver's reference, the priest of Merlin at tenth level could have the ability to utilize smoke powder, not gunpowder. Okay, so smoke powder existed way before there. That's good okay. to know. Okay. Because I, it was just it was something laying around that we picked up when we were talking about the GIF and their uh, uh, their cannon ships and everything. It sort of like evolved and became our dodge. Okay, we don't have gunpowder; we have smoke powder. Okay. Oh. Okay. I don't. I don't. I didn't know it. It uh, uh, went that far back. But interesting thing with you mentioned Merlin. He was a gunslinger, and he was like third character into uh, uh, D and D. And so D and D has a heritage that goes way back to the beginning of you know of, of gunpowder and firearms, and that's in you know modern technology type stuff. Okay, really cool. Because mm -hmm. I know we still see some Boot Hill games even at Gary Con. Is it usually uh, oh, yeah. um, Al Alan runs them, right? Alan Hammock. Tenor? Al Hammock. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Alan, uh, the, the one of the first products I worked on for um, uh, TSR was Burn Bush Wells which was, which I received a town layout and a random outdoor uh, encounter uh, chart. And one was from Alan and one was from Brian Bloom. And I had to come up with an adventure that used both of these. So yeah. we ended up with, you know, Burn Bushwells as, as the home base and then you would go out riding the, riding the, the, the lines. And basically uh, uh, you would have other encounters as well. Excellent. It was, it was great. It had a, had a Larry Elmore cover that was absolutely oh, fantastic. Wow. So. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Always his Elmore covers are unbelievable. Larry's been very one... generous. Every year Every year for our fundraiser, he donates six signed prints and the big ones. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for, for our yeah. St. Jude fundraiser every year. Yep, absolutely. He's been he's been fantastic. All right, a couple more questions here as we're uh, rolling up here. You know, we don't want to we don't want to go over too much time. You know, we got another 20, 20, 25 minutes and we'll call it. But uh, that was a great question, Jim. You know, uh, on, on that I did not know I did not know that Ed wrote that. Also, I did not know uh, with Ed. I did not know until recently because if you look in White Plume Mountain, it says Undead Dragon, and I didn't know Ed created a Dracolich either. 
and that that, that, that was a shock so to me. Cool. That was a shock yeah. to me. Because uh, yeah, thank you, Ed, for for yeah. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for killing all of our. Players. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. a service to the every DM in the world. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what a, uh, it's such a great uh, creature, and uh, you know, uh, living Greyhawk. I mean, uh, Dracotha is like the the main Dracolich mm -hmm. of Greyhawk now. You know, yeah. so um, it, it's it's really a cool thing. So. Publication wise, I know everyone's done everything. It's great stuff, wonderful legendary stuff. What uh, and we may have asked this last time, but what if you had the chance? Man, I would have loved to put this out while you're at TSR. If money wasn't the issue, oh. Oh. well, first of all, money was always. <laughs> <laughs> How about some Greyhawk there, Jim? That's like, oh man, I could have done this in Greyhawk. I wish we had done this. Well, I wish Gary would have let us put his dungeon out. It really should yeah. have happened. Mm. We have a crazed lady that owns it now and, and doesn't want to sell it. So it's it's just not a good deal. That Gary's dungeon is amazing. You know, he made that thing in 73, right. and I got to work on it for a year. And the things he put in that have, are still unequaled now wow. in 2023. The guy was a blooming genius when it came to his game. Now, I saw something on uh, Facebook that Luke said, pray for us. We were going into court. This yeah, that's a whole different deal. That's a money deal. Oh, that's, that's different. Not, ah, oh, okay. That's, okay. All right, that's not right. Okay. All right. Sorry to hear I, that. I will ask him in a, in a week when he comes up here on the QT. I will mm -hmm. ask him. Oh, cool. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Very cool. That, that Jeff, be. Ed, what do you think? that question something you know, mm. oh, i could have done this oh well i i have a straight on answer yeah. i was so pissed off that i could never do the entire continent okay. we would always go back to water deep or someplace and i'd say but we've done them but yeah but but that's what the fans want and i'd say yeah but i i haven't finished carpet bombing the entire globe yet <laughs> and 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 we never got around to that number one and number two uh, I always wanted to do Cormier properly with all the noble houses and all mm -hmm. the lineage. The lineage exists. We've written it up. It's out there. But um, we never got a chance to do it properly with all the heraldry and with all the... Because just to reiterate, the, li the lineage would be campaign idea fodder because you could go to any reign if you didn't like what was on the table for you right now. Or you could bring back anybody from the past, you know, who who um, has a little magical help, either to resurrect them or to stick around. And I'm not now talking about uh, kings or royal family. I'm talking now about meddling nobles. They would come back because they would want to get even with another noble family or a monarch who they thought had done them dirty. And that would be endless campaign fodder, and we never ever got the chance to put the lineage out. So I'd love to do that um, before I shuffle off this mortal coil. Um, so did you did you for shifting gears entirely? Yeah. Have you seen what they did for Glorantha about ten years ago? Those two huge volumes, hardback volumes, yeah, that were you know just monstrously like you want something of that size. Yeah, I was actually thinking a whole row of gilt-edged with little cloth <laughs> ribbons um and i would call it the, the oh, like the breaking up the lord of the rings okay yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. call it call it the history of civilization hey if it worked mm -hmm. for e doc smith during the american yes. depression mm -hmm. you know i mean you know they're uh, so i figured we could do it for us too um Winston churchill and his history of uh english. yeah it, yeah Four volumes yeah yeah mm -hmm. history of english speaking peoples yeah i'm i i don't aim low let's aim high <sighs> So Ed, Ed, with with Patreon though, you're technically putting out you free. You could do mm -hmm. it. I was, yeah, I was just going to say we, yeah. Well, except that 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 has to be a DM's guild. It has to be official thing. Um, that's the only place I can legally release it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. that's number one. And number two, uh, I'm running out of time. I have so many pet projects. Mm -hmm. I'm running out of time, and and I'm yeah. aware of that now. And and I've I've got this bucket list that's the problem the bucket list is too long mm -hmm. i yep. need more buckets yep <laughs> we all do yep jeff how about you on this one 
Jeff. D&D terms, I, there's nothing, nothing that comes up to mind immediately. Okay. In, in projects, et cetera, there was the one that got away, which was a gangbusters okay. adventure that I was assigned and didn't get done and didn't get done. And they ended up canceling the, you know, the, the adventures before I, before I gotten any, you know, made any headway to it. It was the mud, uh, the lakefront city, lakefront city mud cat sca- uh, scandal. It was based on the whole uh, uh, White Sox scandal uh-huh. Uh-huh. back uh-huh. in the twenties. And basically you know, I was putting things together and doing the research and never got it down on paper. That's the one that got away. Uh, but Jeff, wasn't there anything in Marvel that you wanted to do that you didn't get to do? No, Marvel was pretty much pretty intact. I mean, basically, we did a lot of stuff on Marvel. I was impressed when we got the whole official handbooks of the Marvel Universe yeah, turned into game game operations because I thought those those were fantastic. But by the time we passed to the, passed the torch on to like Stephen Shen and others, uh, yeah, I was done. So. I you wanted have... to see Wild Space. Oh well, we did a Wild Space project, but did we? Yes, we did. We did never... one entitled with more ships, if I remember right. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, we never got to see that huge, gorgeous box. Yeah, that's true. So uh... now we're all sad. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're gonna make even well, more sad. Uh... I, I, I will will point out that this is another part. <laughs> Jim Ward was masterful at prying my fingers off the thing I had created and basically said, Jeff, we're going to send you over here and we're going to have you work on something else. And I would go over there and I would fall in love and I would create all sorts of things. And Jim would come in, he would pry my fingers (laughs) off of it and he would send me off to something else. Yeah, designer-itis. Yes. All of the designers at DSR Mm -hmm. let go of anything that they wrote. Well, you had to pry. And I, I had a rule for working with you. The idea of I could get an extension on the deadline equal to the amount of time between when I asked and when the deadline was. So if That's I asked awesome. two weeks ahead, I could get another two weeks. But if I asked a day ahead, I could only get a day. I so. didn't know that. That's interesting. <laughs> it sort of our, was our version of Scotty on the Enterprise. Oh, there we go. A miracle worker. <laughs> so, so Jim and Jeff, I don't know if you're if this will make you happy or sad, but we have in chat we have uh, Curtis says we need to figure out a way to get Ed turned into a lich. Uh, second <laughs> one, I'm launching a GoFundMe for Ed to get a potion of longevity. I don't care how many elves we have to liqu- liquidate. I, love that idea. Yeah. I, I I think that's a great idea. Yeah, so they, potions of longevity. Uh, yes, exactly. So or, elixirs of youth because they don't reverse. There you go. Yeah. Do the elixirs oh. of youth. Yes. So gosh. Fun. Well, thank you all. <laughs> thank um, you all for it. Yes. <laughs> could could you make me young and virile again too, and with knees and a no, back no, that work? No, no. When you get young, you would distracted by all the ladies and stuff. So 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 that. No, I'm He's never right, distracted. You know. oh. yeah. Not he doesn't. Revelator in a game is not that doesn't get distracted by ladies that much because he's all Revelator like, and, yeah, and Ed are that, awesome. So yeah. Yeah, I don't think he get, he doesn't get that distracted because he knows if he starts with the... Tony, Tony's going to yeah. come back with some smart ass yeah. comment back. So. Oh hey, yeah. um, getting Tony evoking smart ass comments out of Tony is what yeah. I live for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 another yeah. page. And Ed distracts us in the most amusing way, so it's awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great enough. job, but someone's got to do it. Someone, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't know if I brought this up last year, and if you guys say no, I'm not going to be upset or uh, by it. Okay, Jim and Jeff, we should have you both on a true drink minimum game and bring you both on as wizards. Yeah. yeah. So we have three wizards like Ravalantar, uh, you know, whoever you guys want to play uh, during one of those games. So just consider yeah. it. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. it's usually on a Saturday night, so down oh. the road. So Jim, yeah. you're more I, more than well. Warning. I, yeah. Warning, gentlemen. Jay's games take us down to our last hit points. <laughs> okay. And all so, the spells. Everything. Yeah. yeah. I, I have no fear of dying. You know. Yes. In, okay. In so. And so. then get to, play, get to play with Eric Boyd, too. Eric's in the group, too. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so just yeah, consider. Have, Saturday is usually our gaming night mm-hmm. on, on our end, and we've been playing Call of Cthulhu. Nice. Uh, but that's cool. We often don't hit quorum, so that's a possibility. So. Excellent. So mm-hmm. uh, I will, we'll look for the next date that True Drink Minimum is. Maybe we'll have you both as special guests. That would be fun. So, you know, and if you can't make it, it's okay. It's okay. You yeah. won't make me all upset. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because we had, you know, Todd Stashwick played on it, not, right? Our friend Todd, you know, so he's got a was good character too. Questions? Was there any other questions? Yes, of course there is, Jim. So Jim, okay. so Jim, I know, I know, I know, I'm running you down, I'm, and I'm sorry about that. So, um, um, spell wise, the spellcaster itself class, um, which which has been which was genius uh, as far as the spells you've placed into this. Was there, and I know what Ed's going to say on this, but for Jeff and Jim, last we'll make this the last spellcaster question. Are there spells that like got lost the time that you guys put in that got cut and you wish you still had them? You know, I, I, I'm just curious, it's in a book or just stuff everything you could into all your publications. It's a fair question, but yeah, yeah. there's never been a spell that I know of that I thought of that didn't get published somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even less of the spells that I ended up creating, like Snowlock Snowball, were, you know, involved because they, they fit a niche. They okay. fit like, okay, we don't have something in this slot at this level. So most of the creations that I did at TSR were to basically for a specific, you know, to fit. And uh, there was nothing like, like I said, oh, I had this spell and I've never used it. So that I really wanted to put in. So. But but I, you, I, 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 I found the old box full of my old old campaign downstairs, so I can check that. So, mm -hmm. uh, Ed, I'm assuming you got stuff cut all the time. Oh yeah, there was this <laughs> thing called word count. Yeah, <laughs> um, because we didn't have the luxury of the young whippersnappers these days have pixels, so they can endlessly, you know, web enhancements and other things that just go on and on and on. We couldn't do that, so all sorts of stuff got left out. But actually, the main culprit in stuff being left out was just lack of time. It yeah. was, uh, I have no. Uh, and it affects you when you're writing fiction, too. If you're writing fast action, you can write quickly. But if you want to write slow intrigue, sort of Henry VIII's court stuff, where everybody is whispering to somebody else behind an heiress, you can't write that as quickly. So if you have no deadline time, it affects everything. And that held true for a lot of the writing. But when it came to um, spells, there were just entire things I wanted to explore and here's an example of one of them rituals and yes. by rituals i meant things that take multiple spellcasters you cast them over several days it's exacting they can create things that no one spellcaster alone awesome. has the power to do but so therefore they become plot point stuff in the games and to just use a perfect example from science fiction the the famous james h schmidt's novel the witches of Karas. Well, eventually, all of these rulers of the various star systems decide they want to get rid of the witches. The witches are a pain. But whenever they go looking for the witches, they can't find them because their entire world has moved. Because all the witches get together and cast this spell that they can't manage alone and move their whole planet. And, and it was that sort of stuff. I wanted to do more ritual stuff, and we could never... Because it's also... It doesn't awesome. tailor itself to... And it gameplay, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. So it was always something that got left yeah. on the table, but and and therefore it's not that we actually missed, you know, a masterpiece or anything. It was like there's this niggling itch of an idea that I never get time or chance to to tackle. It'd be really nice if someday I could, and the someday never came. So it's in a stiff bucket. <laughs> Yeah, to me, I think it's it's a it's a great point, and I think to me it's interesting. Should that be uh, codified into the game, meaning stuff like this, or should it just be left as as story points for the DM to to just well, wing it, so to speak? Yeah, it's interesting because my automatic response would be don't codify it. Yeah, it's a mistake. But then, if you ever got a chance to buy and read the Book of Evan Bindings. For, Empire, um, of the Pe Empire of the Petal Throne. Yeah, mm -hmm. those beautiful chapbooks. Mm -hmm. it, those are full of rituals. And the, it, it's like you found lost Lovecraft stories. Mm -hmm. They're so evocative and atmospheric to read through them. Now, most of them, again, are not something you would probably use at the gaming table because they take too long. As in, right in the description, it takes days for this to oh, happen. Oh, yeah. 
But um, but sorry. as idea fodder, they were great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I think some of the, the aspects that I think, because I'm, I'm toying with the idea of, of what kind of magic could a god do, so to speak. If I used, got really pissed and he wanted to, to it used all his power, what could he do? And, and we have the invoke devastation and stuff in the Greyhawk setting. So there are examples of, of from it in lore, so to speak, of, of weird things have happened that have been way beyond the normal spells. And I was thinking mm -hmm. one of the things you can turn it into, you, you can codify it, but not in the normal terms. Terms. You can codify and say, okay, if I use wanted to, to lay waste to a huge area, we can say that he can do it, but it will take, first of all, it take a week. You have onset times. You have what kind of omens will, will come in the area as it as this effect sets in and stuff. So so I think I want to codify it, but in, not in the regular terms, meaning I would have, okay, so so what does he need, so to speak? Does he and 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 in whatever. And what can he not do all of this? Does he need to isolate himself, turning himself blind and 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 sit there in his in his chamber somewhere and 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 shake out these effects? Or does he need to be with an avatar at at the space, so to speak, so you can detect him. Those are, are things that I think you could, you need to, you should kind of codify more as story plot items than than pure mechanics. And then you should have like that's, sometimes, yeah, Jeff, yeah. But that puts that in the DMG. I don't yeah. think it basically mm -hmm. puts it within any type of spell that a player character would want to cast. That is, yeah, it's oh yeah. That's frame where everything you're talking about and what we're talking yeah. about with the Book of Heaven Bindings is stuff that we can basically use as setting, as background for an mm -hmm. adventure, yep. and therefore codifying and saying how you would do it, I would mm -hmm. place in the GMG and not yep. in the player's hand. That, I would that, not, yes, yeah, that, I would that, not that's, give the player's yep. mm -hmm. because the players are of a very active role as yep. far as, mm -hmm. you know, yes, you go do more research. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Okay, see you next week. Yeah, M yeah maybe I agree. Some yeah, maybe something for the players. They have an artifact. They can do it once for the mm -hmm. campaign, and and it's it's kind of the get to the right spot and unleash this, so to speak, in order to do it or or to counter the effect of something, or or so you can make it into a, a campaign arc points or and, plot and, points. And again, it's a uh, yeah. again that's a DMG mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it's got to be yeah. stepped on mm -hmm. by a humble ant or yeah. thrown into mm -hmm. the volcano in the yeah. uh, in mortal. Yeah. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but like guidelines for the DM how to implement it in a game mm -hmm. rather than than codify it as as rules yeah and that's that's something that uh got taken out of the realm's raw material when i submitted it there were lots of things that were really powerful magics that mm -hmm. the caster sacrificed their own life mm -hmm. and right. for, for ethical code of ethics reasons that stuff had to go that's not yeah. gonna happen yeah. yeah and the reason i had it in there was you know your kingdom is being attacked you're going to lose everything perhaps it's a theoden king situation where you've already lost your son in mm -hmm. battle and you you know you're going down you know your time is over uh, age wise so you're not expecting to survive and you say what the heck let's do the spell and that's and, the nationwide version of the staff of power cracking it over your knee yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah. retributive yeah. strike yeah yeah, yeah. Boom, and it's interesting because they they have uh, derivatives of D and D like DCC, where where spellcasters regularly lose body parts and and abilities and get blind right. and 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 whatever just by 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 almost doing <laughs> daily magic, yeah. so to speak. A, a magic system that I played with and have never uh, you know was putting into a book that never was never written, never finished, yeah. was the idea magic involves dealing with demons with demons that sort of thing but involves that trade of life your lifespan yep. for basically mm -hmm. working working out the spell so basically yep. if you're an old if you're an old wizard you may have the knowledge but you don't have the remaining life to be able to you know to, to pull it off mm -hmm. and maybe you need yep. sacrifices for that i mean that's one of those how does magic work argument that yep. they see mm -hmm. you know would create a very different world world uh, where we have a lot more old wizards because yeah. you know they've all traded off life in, in exchange for being able to cast that fireball. Yeah, in my campaign, I have it that when you cast like necromancy and and if you mm -hmm. if you build a pact and and get divine magic from from creatures like fiends, demons, and stuff like that, then you 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 take away 
part of your life in order to do it. You, you have less death saves and, and you get doomed conditions and stuff like that. You have to sacrifice things like that in order to get that magic. They will not give it to, meaning when you die, you become their property, so to speak, and, and stuff. So, yeah. so, so yeah, things like that. You might turn undead immediately and be under the control of, 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 of that creature and stuff like that. That's then, well, like working for Hasbro. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it doesn't have an analog. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Not only in campaign, it's it's a uh, damn, it's in real world too. Yeah. So Jim, I know you're burning out here, and that's understandable. Um, so I'm helping you tell. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed hasn't even done his lore yet. So if you want, to you want to share anything out, Jim? No, I think I'm good. I've I've How, enjoyed the discussion. Tremendous. How's Giant Lands going? Oh, thank you. Yep. That, you know, it, it's going slow. The guy moved down to Florida. He's a professor now at a college, and uh, he was doing all the sales himself. So we still have, I think, 400 boxes left of the original printing. Okay. And he, he hasn't asked me to do any more adventures. So every once in a while, every other month, I run a game on uh, Discord. Oh, for him. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, if there's ever anything you want me to do to help you shout it out, I'd be more than happy to help. So. I appreciate that very much. No problem at all. Uh, I, uh, Ed, we'd love to hear your lore still. If you, you I, mm -hmm. I know you can go all night, and uh, and Jeff, I don't, oh yeah, yeah, I know. It's. A, I, I should be off as well. So. Would you like to shout something out, Jeff? Shout something out? Yeah, like what's going on? What do you got going on? I, I, it's, I'm not uh, not doing a lot of gaming stuff. I'm I'm working. I work for my day job is working for Elder Scrolls Online. Right. So I'm building a lot of world stuff for them. Mm -hmm. uh, in my spare time, I'm writing plays. We're, we're doing some play readings in the Seattle area, which is kind of cool. But uh, the shout out I'll give is. Oh, yeah, there you go. Or hopefully it's, it's correct for Ed, Ed's new thing. I picked up a copy of Gary Con, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. So. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, uh. It's really good. And, and that's just the overview book. I now yes. have to do the deep dive book. That's is awesome. that where you do each house? <laughs> yes, you do. Okay, in this game, I'll just yes. say this about the game. Mm -hmm. You can have social combat in this Fate game. Of the mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can do social combat, which is a polite term for blackmail. If you know the secret, uh, the dirty secret of a character, you can get stuff them to do stuff for you that without fighting them. And to do that, I have to write the dirty secret for every character in the the city so that i am three city blocks away from having finished the entire city oh God. It, okay. Uh, well okay uh, sorry not wow. the entire city um the the eastern fifth which uh -huh. we're calling river fleet um so that is the thing i'm working on now um okay so and and the whole point is this really will be an evergreen product you know as in we will support it for years and you can use it for years in your campaign and you don't have to play fate of the norns you can use it in any fantasy role-play campaign yes. and I'll, I'll shut I, up I this, this was this this was system agnostic it was really you know i, I it, it definitely had your voice i could hear your voice coming through it all the way through Ooh, so, yeah thank you yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> that was fun jim and jeff thank you so very much we're going to continue on with Ed here. We're going to get some lore okay. out to these uh, people. I really appreciate it. And let's keep in touch about this game. I'm dead serious. We're going to get uh, four hours. We'll see if it works out. If it does, great. If it doesn't, hey, okay. we made an effort. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Jim. Oh, thank you so very much, thank Jim. You. Thank you, Jeff. Thank we'll you. see you guys soon. It was thank a you. pleasure. It was a pleasure uh, being here. What a Take fun care. time. Really appreciate yeah. it. Great yep. discussion. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Because we know, we, we uh, let me uh, let me just remove uh, Jim there. There we go. Don't submit. Don't report. There we go. Okay. Ed was kind wow. enough to do some lore, and we want to have this. Yeah, you know, we definitely, definitely. want to have this. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're continuing. We're not done yet. We're we're going as long as Ed wants to on this on, on discussing. We got lore for Greyhawk, Forgotten Realms, and Dragonlance coming up. And Great. Uh, Ed, my apologies, I completely forgot. We're just conversation. That's just okay. No, no, go. I was yeah. enjoying the conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, wh when you get us rolling, us old war horses, um, we have enough uh, stories, war stories, to yeah. go all night. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want. I wanted to hear stuff in Absolutely. case I learned stuff. I, I, I saw Jim. I saw Jim was burning out there, so I was just like, Yeah, no, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, Jim. Jim has reached the age where he can no longer tolerate 
employees doing stupid things. <laughs> yeah, and, and Ed doesn't sleep, he lures. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was an awesome. Thank you, Norkir. Uh, that's yeah. great. All right. <laughs> Wally Hiss, Dragonlance first, and then uh, Forgotten Realms of Greyhawk second, third. Your, your call. Let's uh, see what okay. we got here. Yep. Okay, so let's start with Dragonlance. Okay. So, in Kryn... There are three moons, or rather, above in the skies above Kryn, there are three moons. And we all know that there is a rare conjunction of the three moons when they align. They're all in high sanction. That is, they're full. And that's known as the Night of the Eye. And Mary Kirchhoff, when she was head of the book department at TSR, actually wrote a Dragonlance novel entitled The Night of the Eye. Good book. You should enjoy it. Anyway, so, we all know about the Night of the Eye. Here's the new lore. Even more rare than the Night of the Eye is the Night of the Tail. When all three moons align in low sanction, there are new moons. The tail is named for its shape. It's a long, winding line of shadowy magic that's on the move. It drifts along silently for some hours until it fades away. So this long tail of shadow manifests on Earth, Kryn, and Toril simultaneously. And anyone in any of these worlds who crosses through the tail has a variable chance of being plane shifted along with all of their gear. <laughs> as if they have safely passed through a gate or a portal into one of the other worlds. Wow. That's so, it. the Night of the Tale. That's it. So, uh, they're all, it, it's, a, it's a grand eclipse. Pretty much. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah. That is cool. Of all three, the, yeah, wow. Awesome. Neat. Mm -hmm. Great new, that was, that was uh, um, Dragonlance. So, uh, you, you choose which one next. No, no, you choose. Do you want to save Greyhawk for the end? Or we can save for Greyhawk end. for the end. Then. Okay. okay. Have realms yes, first, then. Yes. Yeah. Realms. Oh, okay. Okay. Not sure. Right. Okay. So off we go to the Forgotten Realms. And this is a question that has been asked many times. So I'm going to give a partial answer, and you'll, you'll see why when I'm in it. Um, many, many Realms fans have asked, what became of the lost Prince of Evermeet? Elaith Krolnober and Princess Amnestria Moonflower's son. So this is uh, Princess Amnestria was of the royal family of the island elf realm of Evermeet. When four months pregnant with Elaith's son, she left Evermeet to thwart his plans to despoil the ancient burial grounds of Arivandar. She was successful in thwarting this, and the baby was born, and she gave the baby to humans to secretly foster, so Elaith would never learn of his son. And he never learned of his son. It is possible that a Moonblade could still have chosen Amnestria and Elaith's abandoned bastard son, the lost Prince of Evermeet. However... No record exists of what happened to this child. So, <clears throat> you heard it here first. The lost prince is alive, and he's living in Faroon, not on Evermeet, nor in Evereska. He now knows his heritage, though the humans who reared him kept it from him for some years for his own safety. I'm not revealing anything more specific because I consider this Elaine Cunningham's tale to tell. Okay. Other than that, the Harpers and Queen Phil Farrell of Cormir both knew of the Lost Prince and worked to protect and hide him when he was young. And that the code name for him that those who Harp and Queen Fee shared whenever discussing him was Moth. So there's a little nod to Shakespeare for you, Love's Labor's Lost, and a little nod to the to the Secret Service, who codename everybody they protect. Um, and they needed a word that was obviously a name, but that didn't sound too weird. Like you wouldn't want them to be discussing turquoise or underpants or something like that. 
you'd want it to be a word that could be a name, could be a word, could be misunderstood, if overheard. Anyway, so Moth, all of the chosen of Mistra, of course, knew his whereabouts and used the weave to shield him twice when the elite guard of Camille Nemesin hunted him, intending to assassinate him. On one of these occasions, the symbol shapeshifted into Moth's likeness and waited until the elite guard pounced and then destroyed all of the members of the elite guard who pounced on him. Knowing Camille Nemesin was magically scrying the encounter from afar, she shifted shape when she was done slaying the guard, not into her own form, but into the likeness of Camille Nemesin himself to announce coldly to the distant real ne Camille that once again, you forsake all honor. That's some, that's some deep stuff there, Ed. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. cool. And yeah. it sounds, sounds like it's coming. Sounds like more details on that will be coming yeah, out Yeah, it's, it's realms. I yeah. can go deep because it's the realms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel a little more apprehensive going deep in worlds not my own, you know. I have to play nice. It's sort well, of like we 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 like we we, it, we still love it. We still it, love it. Wow. It's like going to your friend's sandbox when you're a little yeah. kid. You can destroy your own sandbox, set it on fire, break things. You can't do that to your friend's sandbox. Right. It's just not the done thing. Anyway, <laughs> so that leaves us with Greyhawk. Greyhawk. Here New lore we go. For Greyhawk, everyone. Here we go. Ivid the Undying. Mm-hmm. Ivid the fifth of Nalax, mm -hmm. for those of you who haven't been keeping score, escaped the conflagration of Roxas in 586 CY and has been hiding in his palatial suite of rooms that he magically transported intact from his castle. But he overstrained his magic in the process. He's been recovering for much of the time since. So he took his entire suite of rooms to a spot beneath the central heart of the Sea of Dust, where the rooms now lie hidden and buried under many feet of volcanic ash. Now, as in right now, Ivid finally feels recovered, so he's been stirring into activity. Specifically, he's been teleporting magic items out into the wider world to specific locations all over the Flanaeus, ruins and dungeons where they are likely to be found by adventurers. All of the items are useful. Many of them are enchanted swords and daggers that glow and aid wielders against specific sorts of creatures, you know, plus one, plus two, da da da. And all of them bear a hidden enchantment that lets Ivid see and hear out of them. So he can gather intel on the adventurers, their deeds, any locale they travel to, and what's happening in the world. When he feels he knows enough, it will be time to emerge and resume a more active role in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. There you go. That was, I love awesome. that. Awesome. Yep. I love Great that. Of course, of course, Rich Longitalis just said he fled to the protection of the Sewell and the Sea. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was great. Yahtzee. Uh, that was great fantastic. One. Yep. That makes cool. total sense for someone that powerful to throw mm -hmm. a, a lot of magic yep. items out there, but mm -hmm. then they just got, they got, they were tuned to yep. it and they can, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a good thing. Ties cool into senses too that we discussed earlier on too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a that's a great one. Was, all three of them were fantastic, Ed, and we really yep. appreciate that. Yep. So, Thank uh, you. Uh, my pleasure. This is fun. Oh, this yeah. is what I do. <laughs> Thanks, Shattered Saint, for that cheer. So, um, show the book, the, your your new book again, because uh, yeah, uh, Jeff's Jeff's was a little fuzzy. So, a couple people asking chat. There oh, we there go. You go. There we go. Yep. Uh, okay. So yeah. you can buy this from Pendlehaven. And by the way, even if you don't intend to, because they are expensive, these books, um, if you don't intend, go to the Pendlehaven um, catalog website, because visually everything they do is gorgeous. Everything. Mm -hmm. And just just take a look. Because Andrew's been doing this Fate of the Norns game and board games and rune games and card games to do with Viking stuff for a long time. There's gorgeous stuff there. And the, you can also get this from drive through the PDF only. 
So for people who, who you know, um, they don't have a lot of shekels in the piggy bank, uh, the, the PDF may be the word to go. And the other word for the wise, if you find this pricey and you wait, I have to write the deep dive book. Andrew has already written a slim book of how to create your dweller or your PC in Fate of the Norns and the Fate of the Norns rulebook. So you never have to buy a Fate of the Norns rulebook if you want to play Fate of the Norns. These will all go together into a box set. So you're so saying hold be, off. You're saying maybe hold on. If if you don't if if you want to get the whole thing, then you can get a box set and do it that way. Um, this is uh, three hundred and fifty six. 360, cool. 358 plus an index, you know, um, it's crammed. And that's what I've been working on for the last two and a half years. And I'm now doing the deep dive book, um, which is one fifth of the city, but it's all the backstories. So every building has an NPC, at least one who's fully detailed. And in the deep dive book, you get their backstories. So you get what makes them tick, what not only what they do in life, but uh, their aims and aspirations and their dirty secret. And uh, you get exactly how to role play them, what they look like. If they if they have a, a verbal tick or a habit, you know, the old innkeeper dry washing his hands, mm -hmm. I put that in there. So you as a dungeon master using this in any fantasy campaign, you, and you can use the whole city or you can just steal a few city blocks and put them in the middle of, you know, the free city of Greyhawk or... Waterdeep or wherever you are. So if your player characters say, yeah, let's go into that building over there. And you go, oh, darn, I haven't detailed that building. Nope, you've got the whole city. A couple quick questions off of that book. Um, uh, is, there, is there a separate city map for that? Or yes. That... Oh, yeah. In the box set, you will get a slightly smaller version of this. Okay. Right. Not, not, not in cloth. It'll be a, a city right. map. And where Andrew and I are talking about, remember how I used to hold up the black and white outline maps of just mm -hmm. the buildings? Yep. Yeah, we may do every city block like that. Wow. So so you have individual city block maps. They may be released as PDFs on the website or to our Patreon That's backers. great if you want to take notes and stuff where you can yeah. have that type of map. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I've just, I've had so much fun doing this and it is, it is the sort of exhaustive work that most people just don't have time to do. They can't take time out of their des their design time. And the only way I could do this was by not sleeping and working into the wee hours to add it on top of all my other stuff. But I wanted to do this because uh, I want to leave something that people can use in any campaign. Right. Um, if you don't want um, the setting, the Viking setting, the real world setting, um, you're going to have to change the names because this is a time when both the Vikings, the Norse, and the Celts who live here, it's their country, they both use matronyms and patronyms. There are no last names. Um, those of us who in our modern real world may be used to some of these frozen matronyms and patronyms, like mm -hmm. you may have met a, a guy called Magnuson, mm -hmm. and it's now a surname, but it wasn't then. Right, right. Yep. So... So um, if you if you want a more, say, high fantasy or Celtic, you're going to have to, and we're probably going to put it out on the website. We're going to put lists of names I just made up so that you can, you know, change it if you want to, to make it, but you can put it anywhere. And that's the whole point of this. It's, it's my sort of love letter to gaming. Hi, guys. I know you never had time to put together your city. Here you go. Here's a city. Finally. Uh, you know. Realms recommendations, Greyhawk recommendations, or just any? Uh, I know you have very detailed cities throughout. The you could already. you can put this in any. I mean, if I was dropping it into the realms, I would drop it into a mid-sized city, okay. because it is a mid-sized city. Mm -hmm. um, it's got 96 city blocks, and most of the city blocks have from 12 to to 30 buildings in them. So that should give you an idea of about how big it is. Okay. In, in terms of, but I mean, yeah, it's, uh, 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 that's just the one thing I've been working on. I'm working on so many things that I can't talk about. It yes, isn't you do. funny. Yes, you are. Um, but, but, uh, and there's, there's tons of fun stuff that I'm, 
I'm working on for all sorts of different uh, game systems and so on. And I'm working on some Realm stuff, of course. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's that. This is just the thing that dropped right now. So, um, and yeah, uh, uh, Andrew was selling it and and per, uh, selling out of it at GaryCon. So um, it is pricey. Um, save your shekels. Um, but I to yeah, those that, beautiful, though. Beautiful yeah to, to people who say well how come it's so pricey Andrew doesn't cut corners I right. mean the price price is decided by the publisher because mm -hmm. he has to stay in business the other thing the other way to think about it is this is a product that you should get years of use out of so it's when you when you work it out by hours <laughs> all of a sudden it becomes a bargain because <laughs> you're going to use it for years. So I have I have one I have one other question tonight that if it's okay and I know yeah. it's gonna be a touchy subject but no no go regarding, right ahead. regarding the movie yeah the what were your thoughts on the Wizards of Thay portrayal um I enjoyed the movie very much See? I was so afraid we would get a movie we'd have to apologize for okay. and we didn't yeah. and for that I will forgive the movie makers just about anything okay because they met the minimum bar mm -hmm. um there were some things in the movie that i think are going to be confusing to a non-gamer um like um when did old minster become a black guy well he isn't he's that young wizard's imagination imaginary version of what he thinks elminster looks like okay. looks like him you know um I thought the Red Wizard spell battle had, and I, I'm trying not to spoiler it too badly. There's a certain spell involving a certain horn that um, is like, oh god, you know. But it, but it, it is true to type. That is the sort of thing that say Zas Tam would hatch up. Oh, got to do this. Got to be big and you know, dramatic and yeah, 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 yeah. So that's. It, it is true to type for him. It's it it rings true. Uh, the actual scene, I knew we were going to get people flung all over the place and half flying and so on because that's what movie makers do. Yeah. Because they can. Yeah. We, we can't do it at our gaming table except with our words, but they can show it and they have to show you some spectacle because you're paying money for a ticket you know so i knew that's what we were going to get beforehand so i was not surprised in the slightest i would have loved to see a longer more protracted but you see we're, we're just getting into my personal preferences now uh, a spell battle that was really worthy of the name and one of the things that they do whenever they do these things is to make the big baddie really bad you inevitably do that to give the party of adventurers enough to do. But what it means is it no longer looks to a non-gamer. It no longer looks like a fair fight. It's all these people ganging up on this one person. Right. And so it doesn't seem as heroic and, and so on and so forth. But I mean, that is a, a built-in problem with the genre and the medium. So these are all, as I said when I did my little video on it on YouTube, I'm picking nits, you know. Right. By and large, I'm happy as a clam. I have seen it three times now, and I am taking wow. my library ladies back to see it again. So that should tell you that I enjoy it enough to watch it over and over again. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I will be buying it um, as a DVD or whatever when that comes out. Um and enjoying it all over again. Awesome. Um, and I particularly like, just on a personal level, the outro credits with the book and the the, the animation of the um, book elements. I just thought that was so cool. It was mm -hmm. like, cool! And, and um, I also, without again, without spoiling it, there are certain characters in this who get asked questions. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been my cameo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been perfect. 
I would have loved to have done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would have chewed the scenery all over the place. But that um, scene is so well done. It's oh, fantastic. Gosh, yeah. It's so good. And it's in the trailer, too. So, so, yeah. so it's yeah, not yeah. spoiling too much. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a fantastic uh, I, yeah, scene. They masterfully to, yeah. did that one. We had a couple yeah. of those questions come up in chat, and I figured it was a safe time mm -hmm. to ask that at this point. Yeah. So, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, because, um, you know, it was way better than that. 500 dragons flying around thing with Jeremy. Irons oh, back. oh my God. Back well, okay. Okay. Uh, let me play devil's advocate for a few seconds here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, as you know, Lorraine Williams tried to kill that movie, uh, with lawsuits, um, and couldn't because Corey had met all of his milestones. Mm -hmm. So she lost the case. Um, but one of the things Corey could not do was make the movie with the budget he had so when you can't finish a movie you have insurance the bond company finishes the movie one of the reasons that scene was so lousy and it delayed the movie the one you referenced with the dragons they're all cloned they're a single dragon cloned mm -hmm. over and over again right um was and the reason the movie took another year to come out is because they were doing the special effects on the cheap because they had no money um he had left many of the most expensive scenes to film last and they never got made because the bond company is not interested in putting out the great masterpiece it's interested in rescuing the, the movie yeah yeah, yeah, as cheaply as possible. Mm -hmm. So what you got was an edited together um, version where half the key scenes are missing. It's the Completely. opposite of the director's cut. It's, yeah. It's the, the budget cut. <laughs> it's the budget cut, yeah. Yep. So um, considering that there was a coherent story at all in that first movie is an achievement. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, I think they made some unfortunate decisions. Some of them was, you know... Corey being overawed by Jerry May Irons saying, hey, kid, I'm a, I'm a great actor. Let me tell you what to do here. Um, and part of it was bad design decisions like the, the assistant baddie with the, with the blue lips. Yeah. And the, the, the things. The mummy. Yeah. The, the, the things curling out of his head, yeah. which um, the, a non-gamer is just not going to get what is going on there. Right. And they're going to say, what is this weirdo? And it, it came across as comical rather than frightening. And which is a problem that many movie makers mm -hmm. have. Uh, if, if, if you cast your mind back to the first time you have seen Empire Strikes Back, there's a thing where you're supposed to be scared by how evil Vader is. Every, every under officer who screws up, he just strangles them with the force. And you see officer after officer who's displeased him go and fall over in the back and of course movie aud movie going audiences started to laugh at it yeah, the, yeah. It be and it was supposed to scare you but instead yeah. everybody laughed because that's what human beings do when they're faced with something horrid and they don't know how to deal with it they try and laugh it off it's a defense mechanism mm -hmm. so it didn't work so it's not just you know a first time teenager making his first movie and screwing up that it's top rank film member m makers can can run into problems like that so i i don't like any of the early the trio of D, &D movies but i am prepared to forgive not yeah. forget and i wish they'd been better because mm -hmm. i wish our initial D, &D movies had been so awesome that they done the same thing for D and D that uh, Star Wars did for all of space opera. You know, just put it on the map and have everybody say, "We've got to have these." You know, um, we, I, I've got to play D and D. I've got to find out what this is. You know, and they they failed to do that, and that's a pity. And it, it and it's the industry's loss. It isn't wasn't just TSR's loss. It was the industry's loss. But you know, uh, um. I, I can I can forgive a lot because having worked in some small way for Hollywood now for a few years doing writing and so on, I realize what a, a miracle it is that any movie ever gets made.
because literally yep. all those things you've seen in westerns where some guy tries to ride two horses at once and he's straddling them and they're getting farther and farther apart oh, that that old gag that gets used in every western movie that's what making every movie is because you have to get the director and the leading lady and the leading man all together on the same page you have to keep them together with real life people dying people getting covid people getting sick people getting other projects um, temper tantrums on the part of people creatively so they walk off a project or they get hired away to do their dream project when your project is sort of their second best so mm -hmm. oh they've got a chance to do their dream project and they're going this may be my one time before i die for my bucket list so sorry but i'm gonna have to you know and and all that happens on just about every movie and the mere fact that anything that isn't absolute garbage comes out at all yeah. is a miracle so i am prepared to forgive and forget a lot of stuff and there are people who have already praised the D, D movie with faint dams by saying yeah it was okay it was like a marvel universe knockoff at least it wasn't bad yeah i i would i would go a little stronger than that we got a movie that was much better than i was afraid it was going to be mm -hmm. and i thank them for that thank goodness we got a movie that good yeah um, i i will go and see the sequel like let's hope there is a sequel i will go and see it i will go and see it and i will buy tickets unlooked at i will not be checking what the critics said i will just be no because if it's the same creative team the two directors we have now um i know i'm in good hands i know they get the game i know they have been dungeon masters i know they are going to give me good D, &D experience i may pick nits again but I'm picking nits on something I essentially love. We so need, we need to see a Dove Falcon hand in the next one or something. Oh, I would love to see. Um, and I understand why you take the big people. Right. Like uh, you get you get to see a certain big wizard ruler um, literally in the shadows for a few seconds as a plot mm -hmm. point. Yep. Um, talking to somebody. And I realize why you take people like that off stage. And it's the same reason that every single time that I attended a pitch meeting for one of these movies, it was, we're going to do the Dirty Dozen set in the realms. And it's because you create new characters, your characters, as in you if you're the director and so on, uh, rather than the big baddies, the big wheels that are already established in the setting. So then you can make new bendable figurines. You can do exactly what you want with your characters because they don't have to correspond to anybody else's ideas of what should happen to them or how powerful they were and literally every pitch that i saw in the past for the D, D movie and every studio had a go at this before the one we got um had drist and elminster in it for five seconds and then sidelined plot plot sidelined mm -hmm. so that the new characters for the movie could be the heroes because they have to be they have to be the heroes oh yeah definitely and and i see why all these things have to happen because of the genre we're telling in so i don't mind um um now uh should i have had a cameo yes i mean but i would be very very surprised if i ever had an elminster cameo because you don't want elminster in the story right you know um or if you want him in the story you want it to be a uh a uh, flashback for five seconds to, to say why something went wrong so now yeah. your characters have to fix it you know yeah. <laughs> i would love to have you narrate as elminster in in that will be That'd kind be of cool. awesome Ooh, yeah. th that i could do that i've that, done in the past yeah. yeah that that will be awesome and especially now when you can kind of really get the atmosphere that you're sitting in 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 like a w with stone walls and and all that kind of stuff you can add the right reverb and stuff to to yeah that 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 i think will be perfect yeah oh yes yeah i would love to do that i mean i could do i could pull out all my old princess bride style chops mm -hmm. as you wish you know yeah <laughs> yeah yep. um yeah it would be great fun but i mean um that that would be uh, you know to, to that's a very long-winded answer to saying Duh. hey jay i like the movie it's um, great. I, I, I hope we get more your, 
love to hear the commentary. I, 100%. Yep. That was great. Mm-hmm. That was great. Now, uh, uh, Jim would be a, Jim would be out, passed out by now if we had you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I get that. And, yeah. and you know. Um, that was awesome. It was an awesome yeah. session. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was so happy that you you got everybody talking. You know, we all unlimbered and, and said stuff. Definitely. Because, yeah, that's when you learn the stuff. If you weren't there, and I was only there for like three or four days each year before and after Gen Con. I didn't work there ever. I was never on staff at TSR. Right. But they yeah. but they would they would put me in the design meetings just to get some use of me. Because I I wasn't allowed to be walking around the building unescorted because I might see some sensitive IP and <laughs> blab about it, um, which is hilarious. But that was their rules, so I had to be escorted everywhere. So they would put me in design meetings. So for a few days a year, I would get. But I I was also everybody's father confessor. If they had a bad day at work and they wanted to blow up about it, they could mm-hmm. phone me at the library up in Canada because there's no point in bitching to your spouse when you get home every day because eventually your poor long-suffering spouse says i don't want to hear any more about it you had a bad day i get it mm-hmm. you know i had my own problems honey you know um and if you if you blab it to somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about there's no satisfaction telling the lamppost or some guy who's stuck beside you in the car dealership while he's having his brakes done just doesn't have the same you know but Everybody from TSR would phone me and bitch. And sometimes it was quite comical because they'd bitch about, you know what that asshole did? Blah, 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 blah. And I'd say, oh, really? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I, I understand how you feel. And oh, I'm, I'm answering the phone at a public library, so I'm answering the phone to everybody who calls. And then I would put the phone back down on the cradle. It would hit the cradle and ring. And it would be the other side of the same mm-hmm. argument. You know what that? And I had to, <laughs> and I'd, I, you know, in order to, I had to, pretend that i didn't know anything about it i was hearing it for the first time yep and you know so i i knew a lot of stuff that happened at tsr that i wasn't supposed to know about because everybody was bitching to me and as a gamer i loved hearing it i needed to know it i wanted to hear it all and so i knew i had to be the perfect father confessor and never spill the beans Mm -hmm. never betray anybody because then they'd clamp clam up and I'd yep. never, ever hear it again. Mm-hmm. Nobody would say word one to me because, no, you blabbed. And that cost me my job or whatever, you know. So I would, uh, but after all these years, it is so nice to sit down because it doesn't matter anymore. Yes. The company's gone. So <clears throat> we can talk. And, and yeah, we, we do, you know, there are certain things that will still be dirty laundry and kept in house. Um, but, great discussion that's the same that's the same with it yeah and and yep. game gamers want to know this stuff because they want to know where the things they love or hate in the game came from yep and and what they don't want to know but what we should tell them more often is a heck of a lot of the things that you think are great classics we had to do in five minutes to rescue a product mm-hmm. that had gone belly up mm-hmm. and the number of times when certain products and i won't name them because you know people are still alive and it's still um where i would get frantic phone calls from whoever was realms traffic cop at the time and saying hey ed do you think you can write like 60 pages for us this weekend and i'd say about what well (laughs) so and so ghosted us or so and so's in hospital and it's production needs it right now do you think you could just like make up some shit, you know? Oh, sure. And then later on, and this is the funny bit, gamers say, "Oh, I love what you did. It's a classic." And you think, "Really? I'm glad you think it was a classic because it's the best I could do in 5 minutes cuz FedEx was on the way to the library to pick it up and take it to the United States of America." <laughs> Literally, we did stuff wow. like that. And then people go, "Oh, that was a great classic. You must have, you know, you must have worked on the design for that." And you go, "Yeah, yeah. Okay, keep thinking that." <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were brilliant. We were absolutely brilliant. Let me tell you how brilliant we were. You know. <laughs> and mostly all, and somebody just asked, mostly all the stuff that you had on the cutting floor. That's all NDA, right? For the most part, a lot. Of oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Wizards, uh, oh, sorry, TSR bought and paid for it. They own it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the conditions of the contract. It's unfortunate. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I can't just share it. Now, there is a gray area now where if I publish something new at 
Judges Guild, you know, I can put stuff out into print that we never got to see the light of day. But for me, there's also an ethical thing, too. I'm not going to um, wholesale publish stuff that um, they own, as far as I'm concerned. There's occasional things where you, you have to say, no, the wheel just, the game, the the universe, the, the world just went in another direction. So you'll never get to see X, Y, or Z. You just never get to see it. Too bad, so sad. Now, in some, I, I, I'm I not one of these guys who thinks everything I did was gold. So it's a real pity that um, uh, you didn't get to see this or that. Like everybody else, a lot of the ideas I came up with were not thrilling. Um, so... I don't mind that not everything got to see the light of day, but uh, I do mind when there were things in the realms that don't seem to make sense. Because like the D&D movie, the first one I was just telling you about, when important linking stuff got never made or never published in this case, there are things about the realms that don't make a lot of sense. Like, um, why has this country never successfully invaded this country next door why do they always get their asses handed to them in a basket well there's things you don't know that are still secrets of the realms that have never been published if they could be published you'd have a different idea of the balance of power and why this or that and those sort of things the world building things they do bother me but i'm getting some of the things snuck out into print at at dm's guild now there's a Bolo's Guide to Orm Purr is still um, uh, very slowly coming along because the people who are working on it with me, my, my writing is essentially done, but the expensive stuff is printing and putting together art, like purchasing new art. None of us are going to use AI art. We're going to pay the pay the artists, pay the cartographers. You do everything right. If you're going to do it at all, you do it right. And they're doing it behind their day jobs. Yeah. So it takes longer, but um, that's coming out. Um, if I live long enough, uh, I will go back to Waterdeep, and Volo is going to start giving you guides to individual wards of Waterdeep, so I can do it properly. Wow, cool! So, Ed, we got to have another show in the near future because we're getting bombarded with questions just for you now. Yeah, boom, 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 right through. So we'll we'll we'll, yep. we'll, we'll set something up whenever you're available. Okay, again, you're free. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. And, um, and also, we yeah. got to get the game together. Yeah, sure. we got to get the game together. Post, and, uh, post yep. uh, Gary Khan there. And uh, let's see what else. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm also jaunting off to Tommy's, uh, Tommy Gofton, t- to record another one of those oh, cool. um, Imaria games. And and Luke Gygax will be at the next one. Oh, cool. that's awesome. Yep. That's great to hear. Yep. And you said Luke's, someone's coming to Canada? You, you had to let that sneak out. Yeah. Yeah, Luke is is coming up to be in in Tommy's new game. I hope I'm not I'm not supposed to keep that secret, but I I I rather think he'd want people to know, and I rather think that that Luke will tell everybody that that's where he's going, um, at some point. So yeah, that has to happen, and then we all have to remit our taxes to Caesar because it's that time of year again. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've... And you know, and there are all the the little things that that delay us then, and then I've got to finish this this. Uh, uh, deep dive book for uh, Oth Cleoth, and then uh, then there's a new round of stuff I'm working on that I can't talk about, and then there's all I spent all day today doing computer game dialogue. Oh wow, cool! And I'm I'm also I've got a top secret computer game thing I can't talk about, but it involves a very large company. Wow, nice. So yeah, um, you're um, keeping I, busy. Yeah, and and now Hollywood's discover me now when I'm. No longer young and beautiful. Why they couldn't have discovered me before I had a belly. And, you know, when I could have been the leading man. And when, you know, all that stuff. And now now they get the old wreck. The old wreck of Ed who, who can, you know. Uh, anyway, I, I bitch too much. No, no, no you don't. No, you don't at all. You've earned it. All right, so uh, Anna, do do your quick shout outs. I'll do we, mine. We, we we skip it to Wednesday, so so okay. there's nothing new spe- right. specific. So so we skip it to Wednesday. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just to, for me, Wednesday night we're yep. doing we're doing Living Grey Hawk High Folk, which got delayed a week. So we're gonna have Ooh. our guests there. All right, that'll be a good yep. one. Uh, then I'll, I'll, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday morning, Sunday this week. Thursday's my game. I don't even know what I'm doing, with my guys yet. Saturday morning is is uh, um, a an all star game. Overwhelmed 
the new recruits. So we got Little Bird, Tempest, Heather Hex, Phantom, and Mike Disney all together. And that's a 9 a.m., 9 to 1 game. That just works for the Saturday morning, so that's Saturday night. And then we'll have Gavin next week. Don't know who the guest is yet. I haven't even gotten there. So those are the four streams. But the 1,000th stream, the 1,000th adventure in my campaign, Ed. Well, not, not session, adventure. Number 1,000, Saturday, June 3rd, 9 a.m. People have asked, what the hell are you doing? I'm going to announce it right here, right now. Okay. Ooh. It's on the wall of fame. We're going to start at like 9 o'clock in the morning. We're just going to go like 8 eight to 10 hours and just stream it and play. It's on here. Some of you actually have maybe done tidbits of this one or love this one. It's on this wall of fame. No one's really guessed it, but it is uh, Tomb of Lizard King we're going to do. Okay? Ooh. We're going to do Tomb of Lizard King. Uh, yeah, yes. And at least an 8 to 10 hour session. Uh, on June 3rd, I'm going to run it uh, with some minor changes to it, of course. So, uh, yep, that's what we're doing. Absolutely. It fits into, uh, Bill's been working out with terrain and figures for it. Uh, so, yes, we're going to run this by Mark Akers. What a great one. Uh, Sakatha, great, great baddie in there. And that's the one we're going to do as an honorarium for number 1,000. Okay. All right, let's do the giveaways. Four of them, everyone. Four. Two actual Best of Dragon Volume 3s. A PDF of Raven's Rook and a $25 gift certificate for whatever product you want from Troller Games, okay? Um, what year is that one? I don't have it in front of me. It's got to be It's gotta be like 82 or 83 or 84 in that realm. Uh, Tomb of Lizard King? Yeah. So um, it's, it's got to be right in that era. Uh, it's for, definitely first edition. All right, let me, uh, let me, see, let me get this going here. Uh, we're going to close this out. Last call. Uh, exclamation point drawing. So... Thank you. We made 10000 finally and until Twitch uh, purges old accounts and I'm back under it again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, we're, we're over. We're like 19 over now. So uh, we really appreciate the support, everyone. What a great show tonight. Ed, thanks. What a great, great show. Oh, that was yeah, lovely. Thank you awesome. So much, this Frank. was an awesome yeah. uh, uh, Return of the Wizards 3 here. I loved having all mm -hmm. of you on. Here we go. I'm going to close this out. <laughs> Dude. Man, uh, I'm so stacked right now. All right, closing it out. Here we go. First winner. You must tell me what you want. Wayne, damn weirdo. I'm assuming you want the best of Dragon Volume 3. One of our top gifters of all time. Look, he's on tops on the list now for the month. Wayne, tell me you want. I'm assuming you want the best of Dragon Volume 3. One of the two. Just let me know if you don't. Yep, gotcha. All right, next winner. BB Fan Fun, BB Fan Fun. Do you want the Best of Dragon Volume 3, 25 Argus Certificate, or the PDF to Raven's Rook? You tell me, as long as you're in chat. BB Fan Fun, it's 82, Tomb of Lizard King. I just saw BB just chat up top, so I know he's here. So, BB, you tell me what you want. Next one there. All right, you want the Raven's Rook. All right, so, BB, whisper me. BB, whisper me your, your email address. And I'll send it to Will. I think he was on Giant Stop. All right, or you can uh, just whisper it to me your your email address that you want, and then he'll send you the code for uh, Drive Through RPG to get that. So please whisper me on that. Next winner, Grendel's Skull. You know what? This thing only allows three winners. That's what it is, Anna. It finishes out at three. You only allowed to have three per. That is so dumb. Now, that is dumb. My gosh. So uh, uh, Grendel's Skull, you on for the winner? So guess what? I'm going to have to restart this for the last one. Is Grendel's Skull on? We still have another giveaway here. Grendel's Skull. Grendel's Skull. We may have two more. Grendel's Skull. Is he? Let me see if he's in chat. I don't see him on now. Uh-oh. All right. So guess what? I'm closing these out. Damn winter, I got you back. Complete. Uh, there you go. Exclamation point drawing. I'll give you all one minute and 30 seconds. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> Stupid thing. All right. We still have a Best of Dragon Volume 3 and a $25 gift certificate. I gotta, oh, this is going to be a problem for like uh, Christmas events and stuff, Anna. If it only lets yeah, me do three at a time. Yeah, if this keeps doing it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's annoying. But, uh, you have but, to report it, and then they have to fix it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I remember we used to do like twenty or thirty at the time. Oh yeah, there. you've done done lots of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, giant stop. Will uh, BB's uh, emails coming over to you right now on Discord? There it is. It's done. All righty. Okay, here we go. 
there's still a Best of the Dragon Volume 3 and a $25 gift certificate for any kind of merchandise you want at Troller Games, even hard copies. Yeah. Long Gitano said uh, the Baclooney probably designed it. The Baclooney it. Yeah. did it, yeah, exactly. Or, my, or you know, or blame me because you know, my wife always does. <laughs> Ten <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh, you 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 have a workaround, Chuck? Okay, tell me tomorrow. That's great. I'll, uh, I'm working all day tomorrow, but I'll get in touch with you. Wow, that's good to know, Chuck. Here we go. Troy, grats, Troy. You deserve it. Cannibal, grats. And Deldawaf73. So whatever Troy wants, Deldawaf73 gets the other one. Troy, I'm assuming you want a Best of Dragon Volume 3 hard copy. And uh, Deldawaf, you will get the um, you will get the $25. Let's and we're gonna raid into we're gonna raid into uh, Darling like we usually do on Sunday nights, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Yep, gotcha. All right, let me just write this down so I remember. I already did BB, so we got we got Damn Weirdo and Troy. And Troy with uh, with uh, best, and I'll get them out tomorrow, everyone. Best three. All right, Ed, thank you, Anna, thank you. Oh, this great, was great, awesome. great show. Shattered, thank, thank you, you. thank you for that. Yeah, and thank you again, Ed. This was so much fun. This was oh, a, this was lovely. This thank was a you. great one. I appreciate it, everyone. Um, I will see you all Wednesday night. Um, lots going on. I mean, so thank you, Mike. Uh, so much stuff going on. Ed, and like I said, we'll be in touch. We'll get the game running. Hopefully, that'd be cool if we could have Jeff and or, or Jim there playing mm -hmm. uh, other Greyhawk mages, of Greyhawk mage tensor or something. That'd be really cool mm -hmm. at the same time. Because then mm -hmm. I can just area affect you both. I'm just kidding. Ah, ha, 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 yes, just remember, don't give Jim a chance to bow out early. Yes, I say, Jim, if you die, you die. No, so... Yeah. Jim, Jim, I hear Jim's tough as a player, though. I hear Jim, Jim's tough as a player. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because he's, because you know, it being coming from the DN aspect, so um, he see, knows spells. He's one of those guys who knows the ins and outs of spells. He doesn't know your spells. That's true. <laughs> he doesn't know what flesh shiver does or many jaws or. <laughs> no, of course not. Of, of course not, because. He was a high muckety muck creative manager by the time the realms came along. So of course he didn't read any of it. Exactly. <laughs> We're ready in the Darling Creep Show. Uh, everyone have a good one. We'll see you all Wednesday night. Thank you all. See you soon. Have a good one. Let me see if I hit the right button here. Boom, 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 boom. Let's get over a hundred. One, that's it. Over 100. Five, four, three, two, one. See you Wednesday. Have a good one. 104. Nice. A lot of people are probably already watching her dual watching that are already on our show. She already had 36 in there, so that was awesome.